Hello, everybody. I've done solo guided playthroughs for Fighter, for Bard, and also a Dark Hunter guide I never uploaded. But now you might be wondering, Stream Tom, I haven't seen one for characters that can deal with traps. What if I want to play by myself, but I want a way to get through traps, but not by like playing as a fighter and just tanking them or playing as a bard and getting around them. I want to disable every trap myself. I want to take my hands, put them on the keyboard, and then pretend that I'm picking a lock and working through some mechanisms by right clicking on a trap box. Well, I'll tell you, I'm going to help you sort that out right here with a brand new character that's going to get you through all of the traps yourself. And today I'm going to be playing Dark Hunter Caster Ranger. Now you might be wondering, why would you do that? Is that actually good? No, it isn't. It's actually very bad. The benefit of this video is that if you watch this, you'll understand how to get through situations where your character is garbage and be able to handle anything that comes your way. And on top of that, you can play a better character, like any type of regular rogue or regular dark hunter or anything, and have a faster time, but doing exactly what I do with the traps. So it's going to be kind of like a double whammy. So we're going to start with dark hunter because it's important. And then for the race, I'm going to be using Azamar for this because it is going to be the best thing that's going to help me out, giving me a bit of extra healing in the short term, as well as increasing my wisdom, which is good for my character. If you did want to follow along with this build guide, you shouldn't, but there will be a link in the description which will recommend the Azamar. This character is also going to be using Favored Soul because without it, this character is going to die. Um, but again, it's up to you whether that's something you want to do. So we have our Azamar here, and now we got to throw in our stats. Uh, Constitution, going to roll with a 14. Intelligence, going to roll with a 16. And Wisdom, going to roll with a 20. If you don't have a 32-point build, drop two points of Wisdom to start with an 18. And then you can start with a 10 Strength instead. But I got the 32, so this is how I am going to start. Now, as far as the skills go, I'm going to pray that I actually wrote the skills in myself. I did. Good. Okay, perfect. I was worried that I didn't do that. Concentration, two points, disable device, uh, heal, I'm going to get because I need to heal myself. I'm also going to max out Haggle because I am playing solo, so I want to have um, just a few points here so I can actually uh, you know, use some, uh, it makes a little bit of money. One point into Tumble because it's really important. Uh, I need to make sure I have a uh, spot maxed out, search maxed out, op disable device, open, uh, disable device, and open lock. All of that's really, really good. Um, I got to put one point into perform, which will allow me to get through one single door. Um, there's basically a quest called Make Believe, where one point in perform lets you bypass an entire section, leaving me with just enough to put some points into swim. And that's how I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be sneaking, so any hide move silently isn't important. Listen is a useless skill. I don't need jump because I cast the spell. Um, and a little bit of concentration. I actually only use spell-like abilities, so you probably don't need any concentration. But uh, why not? It might come to handy at some point later. I have no idea. Anyways, now I get to actually choose my feats. Now, this character um, has a lot of different options. Um, unfortunately, I want to take the meta magic feats because I'm going to be a caster, but I can't because rangers, unfortunately, don't get to take meta magic feats. Uh, so I'm restricted to shield mastery. This character will end up using a shield because uh, shields are really defensive and helpful, but uh, that's always fun. Bond with protector here. And then as a favorite enemy, it doesn't matter which one you take because you don't hit monsters with physical attacks, or at least not later on. You might at the beginning. Now I'm just going to change up my character. I think I'm a hunter, so I'll make myself green. I'm going to roll around a little bit. Get the character looks kind of cool. Um, I want one of the newer hairstyles. So I'm just going to random until I get a slightly newer hairstyle. Beautiful. So it looks a lot better than some of the older ones. And then I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to make my character true neutral. because I have no need to be anything else. And this character is going to be called uh, Solo Guided Caster... Ranger. Why? I don't know. Because I'm an idiot, probably. And we're going to start from there. Now, as important, uh, something important that everybody should know about these solo guided playthroughs that I tend to do, um, I don't uh, use anything that I have st stored on these characters, so this character will be doing only things that it finds itself. I'll be breaking boxes to pick up gold, so if you decide to play this character as your first try in the game, you'll be able to do that yourself. Now, one of the first things I'm going to show you, if in case you haven't watched any of the other series, is, is the ability to uh, kind of set up your inventory and your bars right away. You might be wondering how you do this, because you, you know, it's annoying. You start a character, brand new character, and oh, you got to move around all your bars and everything else. What you can do is you can actually save a layout. You're going to type slash UI layout. And once you have your layout set exactly the way you want it, everything is perfect in the right spot. And hit save. 
and then you're going to type in a name. So we're going to call this uh, bad layout. This is the bad layout. So by doing this, now it's saved. And uh, this is the, the awful layout. This looks terrible. It's garbage. This is not a great way to have this set up. Um, but what if you want to, but if you had it saved to something that was good, so you'd already saved one, I have. I'm going to load main three, which is my main layout that I use. I'm going to press the enter key and boom. Everything is where it's supposed to be except for the chat box, which I have to move back here. Now, uh, the benefit of this is it saves you a lot of time. All my bars are now sorted. Just, you have to remember, you have to actually pop out the necessary bars. So that's why I popped out all those bars and I also flipped four and five. It won't do that for you. Um, so I had to, so for me, because I know I use uh, seven total bars, I just pop out until I see the number seven, I flip four and five, and then I tape it in and it sets it up. That's a fast way to kind of get through that process. I'm gonna talk to this lady and we're gonna go Left-clicking is your favorite spell-like ability. It's a pretty good spell-like ability, not going to lie. I'm going to skip the opening because uh, I don't want to do it. And I'm going to grab a longsword. So, yeah. What goes up is for use magic device. It's uh, not concentration. Um, now, because this is a solo guided playthrough, as much as I would like to use this tome of racial bonus and the universal tome of Sharn and whatever, uh, to make it fair so you guys can follow it, I won't be using those. If you have access to them, you absolutely should. I'm tempted to just do it myself anyway because of how awful my character is and that I will need every advantage I can get. But you know what? We'll figure it out. Um, now, one thing I would recommend that everybody does, whether you're a new player, a solo player, anything else, it's join a guild. If you're on a different server, um, you know, try to talk to other people and find out which guilds are open for people to join so that way you can get some ship buffs as they are fantastic and will dramatically improve your experience. If you don't know what guilds are available, you can always just go into the Who tab, then sort, of which you get access to with the O key on the keyboard, sort you based on the guild so you can see who's in which ones, and then you can message one of the people and say, hey, are you an open guild? Can I join? Uh, it might take a couple messages if you're not sure. If you're on Arganesson, there are some guilds like Blue Light or Barbarian's Guild where they'll let anybody in. Um, but about the other servers, I don't know for certain. Uh, here, this is on Hardcore League. So when you go into my own guild, you will get kicked. So slash join channel YWGK. I'll actually put this up here. The way that my guild works and how you get in is you have to use a special user channel. So you type in slash join channel YWGK. That's the name of our channel. You will get kicked. So I'm going to do that. And it's going to tell me there's 74 members. And I'm going to type slash one to type it in. I said, hello, may I have a guild invite, please? So I type that in. And then, no, I don't need to join YWBK. <laughs> a lot of people did join YWBK. And then they would ask for an invite and then never get invited because that is the wrong channel. So please pay attention when you type that stuff in. Also, when you join a large guild like mine, um, the gear game's going to freeze a little bit. So yeah. Anyways, now we can go get the ship buffs. Now, of course, some of you might not have ship buffs and might see this as a bit of unfair for the solo guided playthrough. But I cannot stress enough how good it is to be in a guild and how easy it is to get into pretty much any guild with maximum buffs. Please make the right decision. Just click on this thing and then watch as I gained uh, 21 hit points, a whole bunch of spell points. Uh, look at all these buffs I got. Like everything is so good for this character. I highly recommend you join a guild when given the option. Now I'm just gonna quickly do a tiny bit of inventory management uh, so that I uh, can actually do stuff. So this is gonna be prepping my characters. Unfortunately, this is mildly boring, so you kind of have to watch it. It's just getting rid of all of the stuff that's in my inventory that I don't want to have. Because I have too many things. Um, I have like all of these, all these cosmetics, these teleport items. I'm going to keep one teleport item. I'm going to bank this, uh, delete that, bank this, bank, delete. Uh, I'm going to bank this for later. I'm not going to delete these tomes. So in case I want to use this character, I can actually just use it in the, in the future because I'll already have the tome. I don't need that. Uh, bank that, delete, delete. That's a bag. That's convenient. Then I don't have to buy one. Technically, I should delete it because, you know, if I don't delete it, then I already have this extra bag in my inventory. But meh, it's fine. All right, so that's pretty much everything. As I said, I'm not gonna be taking anything out of my storage here, so I'm gonna be avoiding that. So we're not going to do that. Um, and there we go, I have a weapon. I have a single one-handed weapon. I have my uh, chain shirt, I have a bow as well. And unfortunately for me, my strength stat is very, very low, making it so I basically can't deal any physical damage, which is a bit of a problem. However, that's not that big of a problem because there are a few ways I can get around, I can get around that issue. Also, a level 25 just died. Oh, I forgot. I forgot I don't have Feather Falling. Don't do that either. 
Don't do that either. If I hadn't put a point into tumble, I would have died. Don't do what I just did. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm going to grab the new Underdark Warrior outfit set because I think it looks really cool. And uh, I'm going to uh, cry in the little corner uh, and pray that I don't do that to myself a second time. Oh, okay. All right, there we go. Oh, I'll make my character look cool. Because I am the Dark Hunter caster ranger, so I might as well, like, look the part and look like a Dark Hunter. Which, you know, my character does kind of look like a Dark Hunter. I'm a Hunter of the Dark here, so not bad. Anyways, let's uh, stop getting distracted and go on a adventure. Also, the person who died to a ghoul, I think, was that 25 or 26? It was 22. That was a 22. So someone... Oh, two! 22 and 25. Okay, so that is the quest Catacombs and Epics. This is a pro tip for you if you're just getting started. Uh, Catacombs and Epics is one of the most dangerous adventures you can go on. Please never, ever go into Catacombs on Epics. It's one of the worst ideas in the universe, and you will die. Uh, don't go into Catacombs and Epics. Please, please, please don't do that. Terrifyingly dangerous. Catacombs on Epic Elite. The ghouls hit for about 800... Uh, 800 to 1,000 um, before mitigations. So even if you have a 100 physical resistance rating, which you probably don't, but if you think you have 100 and you're like, ha, hey, I'll be fine, then the three ghouls attack you. One, two, three, you take 400 from each and you're instantly dead. So don't do that. Also, since I did start as an Azamar, for something I don't understand, um, Azamar, oh, treasure, treasure feet, haha. Azamars, for a reason I don't understand, uh, they're... Bond of the Protector doesn't spawn on their sheet, so you have to, like, pull it out and then press it, so that way you can use your healing hands. Mad Men Streamer is going to Epic Elite Quest. I did Epic Elite the entire way up for leveling, but I was playing Blightcaster, and Blightcaster is not really fair. So, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a different experience. Okay, so, uh, my character has borderline no hit chance. I don't do any damage whatsoever. Um, because I'm plus zero, because my strength is garbage. So what is the solution to this problem? How do I make it through this adventure? Um, well, there actually is a way to do this. The problem is, some of you might be wondering how I play Caster Dark Hunter. The answer is Fade Dark Illusionist. Fade Dark Illusionist is the, kind of the bread and butter here, and what I'm going to be using for all of my damage. Just pretty much Shadow Blade and Fan of Shadow Blades. The problem is, I don't get those for quite a long time. So what am I going to do? The answer is get some treasure, so I can buy a Hireling. Hirelings are what's going to save the day here, so I'm going to do that. Also, I should use my gold roll, but I'm going to give it up for the people in chat to be able to roll on it. Um, because they want, they probably want to. So gold. Do a prediction here. For fun. Uh, I'm going to do this quest on normal, because I can't do it on hard or elite. So I can get some gold, so I can buy a Hireling, so I can repeat it on hard or elite. At level 1, with no items, uh, my damage is not very good. My hit chance is even worse. So, yeah. Also, elemental damage is reduced here on the Hardcore League, so, you know, this is going to make it a little bit harder. You're hoping this ends up with a death in the 16th. Thank you for hoping that my character dies in my video series. I do hope my character dies for drama. I should be breaking every box to try to look for loot, so I'm going to be breaking a lot of things. I just need a couple things to sell. Hirelings are unbelievably cheap, but until I get one, I'm going to be in trouble. I also don't have any healing potions, so I have to be very careful about my hit points. Um, because I can only basically use my heal lay on hands once on myself. There's the key. Oh, and there's a potion of cure light wounds. Nice. Is your dex higher than your strength? No, they're both 10. Because they both started at 8. At bad for you, go, but great for the views. Very true. I don't think this guy can kill me. On uh, elite difficulty, he has... Um, what is it? Chill touch? Uh, which does necrotic damage, or negative damage, which is not a big deal. But what the bigger problem is, is it drains your strength. Um, fortunately, he doesn't have that on normal difficulty. He did zero. Oh, there we go. And I got two things I needed. One, Thieves' Tools. Dark Hunters, even though they can disable traps, don't start with Thieves' Tools. I don't understand this, but it is what it is. So you need to be careful about that. Um, so now I have Thieves' Tools. I can actually disable traps, which is nice. I'll want to get better Thieves' Tools, but that will be kind of more difficult to come by in the, as we move into the future. Um, how do I do this puzzle again? I almost forgot. Jeez gives you some in the first quest. Oh, but because I skipped it, he doesn't give me any? Interesting. That's actually something I didn't know. I haven't done it in a very long time. Wonderful. And now I have the scroll case. Cure Light Wounds, Cure Light Wounds, Copper Pieces, meh. 
I probably should buy at least one of those Cure Light Wounds things, but that's fine. All right. So now I have a very small amount of Platinum, so I can buy a Hireling. Now, the reason why that matters, first I'm going to grab the Rugged Belt for the extra little bit of hit points. I'm also going to sell this sword out of the game because I can't use Bastard Sword, so I don't want this. So I would like to sell this. Hello, sir. Trade me a Bastard Sword, please. I can now use some of that money to buy a shield so my character can be more defensive in general. I have Shield Mastery, so that's good. I don't have the ability to dual wield yet. But also, I can pick up a Hireling, and I'm going to grab the Cleric Hireling because, in my opinion, the Cleric Hirelings are the best. The Cleric Hireling is able to deal a reasonable amount of damage while also um, healing you at the same time. I find all of the level 1 Hirelings do pretty much the same amount, but the fact that she heals you is just really, really valuable. So even though this is a plus zero shield, it's a pretty good looking plus zero shield. Do you guys ever take a chance to look at some of these models? I don't know why, but I really love this like square shield with just like some of the steel bolts on the side. I don't know. I really like this, especially with like the, the concavity of it. It's, it's very cool. Um, so I, I like that shield. I, I, I don't have a particular reason. Anyway, now that I am uh, slightly more powerful than before, I'm going to return to this quest on Elite Difficulty and try to smash it out. My goal is going to be to play every single quest on Elite Difficulty when given the opportunity of which quest to choose from, um, so hopefully that will make it entertaining and interesting for you guys. She's also going to heavily outdamage me, um, so don't expect me to do more damage than my hireling, because I won't. Now granted, one of the cool things is that as a Dark Hunter I actually do get sneak attack damage for free at level 1, um, and so I do have a little bit of extra sneak attack dice that is just kind of nice. So if my hireling ends up doing more damage than me on any monsters, I will automatically get to sneak attack them. Now my character is not doesn't have the highest armor class, but because I have the shield, I'm at an 18, so it's harder for things to hit me, so I don't get hit every single time, which is nice. And again, as I said, I'm not going to be dying as I go through here. Now, I might be kind of worried about the boss here, but because I have the lay on hands, this is where I'm not worried at all. And hopefully I can get a couple more pieces of equipment. Just something to fill up some of the slots. Um, as you're, And also you're going to notice that uh, my hireling is going to be kicking ass. Um, she's just kick, killing everything. As I said, she does a really good job. I'm hitting for 5 to 8. She's hitting for 16. I don't know why hirelings do so much damage. Maybe it's because she has a lot of strength. I'm not sure. Again, my biggest worry is my strength damage. So i got to be care a little careful about that. But fortunately I made my saves. So that's not too too big of a worry here. Also, she only has one cure, Cure Light Wounds, which means that she's mostly going to be meleeing the boss as opposed to healing me because she has to do something else when she's on cooldown. Ooh, is that a plus two shield for level twos? Holy moly, four armor class. And it's a light shield, so it's even better than mine. And it's cold absorption and intimidate? Wow. So I feel lucky. Just a direct upgrade right there. Unbelievable. It's called Streamer RNG, ladies and gentlemen. Streamer RNG. Make sure when you're playing the game, you turn on your Streamer RNG, so that way you are always capable of getting the best loot drops whenever you play. A lot of people always forget to go into the settings and turn on the Streamer RNG option, uh, but they re you really should do that. Also, for those of you watching at home, that was a joke. Some people don't don't uh, aren't familiar with the concept, but you know that was a joke. I have to say that because there will be some people commenting on the YouTube video being like, "What?" I don't have stream RNG. I can't find it in the option settings from Tom. I'm like, oh, God. And anyway, we're going to put one point into Deepwood Stalker right now because it gives me 10 sneak attack die, which is just good right away. Um, and then after that, I'm not going to put any more points in here, so the 10 sneak attack die will be nice. I'm tempted to just go into Dark Hunter to grab uh, sneak, uh, the, uh, more, another sneak attack dice so I do a little bit more damage to monsters that I don't have aggro on so I can get a little bit closer, but again, we will see. Ten, one sneak attack die, 10 positive spell power. Sorry, I had two ideas running through my mind at the same time. Try really hard to die in Korthos or have very bad luck. Uh, you'd be surprised. As I said, that that uh, large fish person can just spam... Um, uh, what? Chilling cold touch? Chill touch on you? And he can just spam it over and over and over, causing your character to die very quickly. And we all get the bless, so I have a little bit more health. Now, here is the hardest part. I basically need to stop the guys from charging the crystal, so I need to intimidate them somehow. I would say it's very easy to die on Korthos Island, especially if you're rushing or if you're playing a character that doesn't do very well at level one, which is what I'm doing. I'm playing a character that does not do very well at level one or two or three or four or five. This character will only start to feel kind of okay around level eight. So this is going to be a slow process. Let's just say that. I'm going to be very heavily reliant on my hirelings to help me out here. You can damage the crystal yourself. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
This is what I'm worried about, is this guy right here. Fortunately, my sneak attack damage is pretty good. No, damn it. Okay, it's going to take me a few tries. My sneak attack damage is pretty good, but apparently the crystal took two hits and it exploded. So that was un not ideal. Usually it takes like three or four hits, so maybe they got a crit or something. I don't know. Let's try again. Try again. Get them eventually. Skip level one with XP stones. Yes, that's usually the secret. That's what I would do. Speaking of skipping level one with XP stones, uh, you guys put in your prediction on the gold roll to see where it was going to be for the day. And uh, it's about 50-50 actually, so we're going to see how it goes. Time for the gold roll. That's right, today we're doing the daily gold roll. Holy moly, is it going to be high, is it going to be low, are you going to be rich, or are you going to be poor? Let's find out now on today's gold roll. Ooh, 60. Not too bad. Not too bad. 60 is pretty good. That means I should have... Uh, I've got 3,000 XP here. I'm going to eat. Om nom nom nom. Which means I can take level 2 after this, which will be nice. It won't give me really any character power, anything special that I can do, but it'll just be nice. Get him, Dryad. And I don't want to rush out there because I don't want to put myself in harm's way. Okay, that's one down. It's this guy's the only other one that's going to be beeline it. I missed the Intimidate. Stop. Thank you. Okay, I got aggro. Woo! There we go. Now it's good. And Korthos in day one to a Hound. Yep, the Hounds could get people in Korthos. If you were too slow in quests, you would die to a Hound. Uh, if you spent more than five minutes inside of an adventure. Uh, also, I got a 60, which is not high enough. So sorry to all the people who uh, lost a bunch of points today. My base attack bonus will go up. It won't. I'm taking favorite soul. Is there a build link we can follow along? Yes. If you're a member of the Shrimp Tom Discord under Hardcore Guides for Season 8, um, the the build I'm using is the last build. What? I've never seen that happen. What? Korthos is doomed to an icy grave. Oh, uh, what? I've never seen that happen. He would just start attacking me and then he made a beeline to the crystal instead. I learned something new today. Amazing. I've literally never seen that. That's fantastic. All right. Well, well, you know what? Use that XP stone. You know, sometimes you have setbacks. Sometimes you have setbacks. That's okay. You know, that's okay. It's just, you know, as it doesn't matter how long it takes you to start, as long as you get there along at some point, you know? Anyways, so now I'm leveling up. I'm going to be a favorite soul now, um, and so I'm going to put my points into my skills here. Uh, since I'm a favorite soul, I'm going to go disable device, uh, search, and heal. That's all I've got points for. So disable device, search, and heal, so I can still, still disable traps along the way. Uh, and this character gets to be a follower of any deity. I'm going to choose follower of the sovereign host, so I get longsword as a favorite weapon, which so gives me plus one to the hit. The gods have seen to restore your term. internet after your unprovoked attack on Stefan. Probably. And then I'm going to grab night shield and uh, cure light wounds. Technically, my stream crashed out basically immediately after that, which was always fun. Um, so I, I couldn't keep going. But if you want to see how that ended, though, uh, I did upload the video to my uh, stream uh, VODs channel. So by leveling up his favorite soul, it gives me two things. One, you notice I have a lot of spell points right now, and I have the ability to cure light wounds. So now I can heal myself very, very easily. Anyway, I'm going to go to the hireling vendor in the market, or in the harbor here. I'm going to buy a slightly better hireling, a slightly higher level one. Let's grab uh, Tobias. He's level two, so he should do a little bit more damage than my level one hireling, which should help me out just a smidge. My character, unfortunately, did not gain a base stack bonus, but I gained plus one to hit with longswords from the follower of faith from my religion feat. And you might be wondering why I'm multi-classing. If I don't multi-class, I can't actually spend points in the Fade Arc Illusionist tree because it requires magical training, and I can't take meta magic feats for a while. So uh, by multi-classing, it allows me to take meta magic feats earlier as well as use the Fade Arc Illusionist tree earlier. So I'm gonna grab a white cat here. Um, what's my charisma? Zero? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, charisma and damage is not good at all. So I might as well, I can just pick up more mana if I really wanted to. So I'm going to have a ton of spell points, I'll tell you what. I'll have a ton of spell points over here. Uh, no, the familiar doesn't matter. Just whichever one you think is fun. I usually grab the cat because I like cats. 
It depends. I sometimes go with the regular cant, sometimes I go with the flying cant. It depends on, on you know, where my mind's at. This guy still has Bless, which is nice. Thank you. And we'll see how it goes. But are you hoping to upload a video on Healer Sacred Fist? Yep, I am. I do want to do that. I have a I have a long-term goal of doing that. How much do I heal for? Nine? That's enough. I basically heal for enough to the point where I can't die now, which is good. I have the fox is your dog person? Heck yeah, dude. I'm not very much a dog person. I'm more of a cat person. I guess foxes are kind of dog adjacent, right? They're like in the canine family. Nope. I can always get the, the one guy that I don't need to get. But I can't get the one guy I actually need to get. Okay. So now it's this guy. Stop. Cease your investigations. Oh, God. Okay, we're good. I could also grab the pet here from Dark Hunter, just to have an extra thing that's attacking and doing something, which is also something to think about. Um, at level three, I can use the Shadow Blade for damage, which is something I do want to do, but it's going to be a going to be a, a, a bit of patience. I know I'm not doing a lot of trapping here, but you know it just takes some time. Random generated character? No, it would look like it, but no, this is the this is the solo guided caster ranger playthrough. Um, I'm going to do this so I can show people how to trap and do traps throughout the entire game. This character is also very terribly bad in the early game, which means that um, if you happen to be in the habit of making bad characters, like I happen to do, um, you'll have a good idea as to what kind of tricks you can use to kind of overcome some of the challenges in the early levels. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Caster Ranger. I don't want to leave this crystal unprotected. Makes me really nervous. No! No, you son of a bitch! God damn it! I even said don't leave the crystal unprotected. Oh well, at least I can loot this chest before I get kicked out. Alright. Let's see if I can get a better weapon. I'm going to go to the other adventure that's over here. It's going to put on this shield. And uh, what is this? This is a kinetic lore and life. Very good ring. Amazing pull. I need that. Uh, I'm going to go into this other quest here, which is hopefully going to be easier for me, and we'll see how it goes. Yes, the weapon is the problem. Yes. The dungeon was dragoned. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. All right. Let's try again. Let's see what we got. Most residuals from his shirt. Yeah, thank you for all those of you who participated in the Jacoby Drexelhan uh, shirt contest. I appreciate it. Uh, you've done a great, great job. Now, if you happen to be playing as a rogue adjacent character, instead of going to the right, you can start by going to the left here. The benefit of this is that there's a secret door, which then leads to a trapped treasure chest. Now, trapped treasure chests are not always something you want to be charging straight into. However, in this case, it's not too bad because. I can disable the trap. Now, the way the trap works is when you step in the water here, it causes it to activate. So if you don't have the ability to see, deal with traps, you step in the water, let it go, and then you can grab the chest for free. However, what if you wanted to disable the trap because you know you have teammates with you who are incapable of waiting? Well, the trap box is right here next to this lever. And if you accidentally blow this up and you need to do it, try again, there's another one on this other side over here. So you have two options to get your box disabled. Remember that disabling treasure or traps also gives you bonus experience points, which is nice. Ooh, and I got boots of physical magical resistance rating. That's always fun. Not terribly useful for me um, at my current level, but still, I'll take it. Also, are these level... Oh, you know, they're level three boots that give three? Nah, that's not too bad. A treasure chest glimmers in this passage. There may be something of use inside. So as I said, unfortunately for this character, it the speed is not the best early game. Like most casters, it really slows down, or it's a, it's a lot slower in the early game. So it's going to take me a little while before I kind of get the groove. Let's just say that. What were those cultists up to? This bears more investigation. There's another one. Oh, you didn't know there was two trap boxes? Yeah. You guys are going to learn a lot about where the traps are. If you don't know trap locations, you can probably just skim through this and look for trap locations. Also, what's up, Tyrannical Dad? How are you doing? I can actually use my healing magic on Undead to take him down. I'm not going to do that, but that is technically an option. 
take it with you. It may Fun fact about this quest, because all of the Sauhoagen are um, busy focusing on their task of resurrecting somebody from the dead, you can sneak attack them the entire time because they're basically casting a spell turning away from you, which is very handy. Another beautiful day. It's pretty nice outside, actually. Yeah, I was outside catching some Pokemon a little bit earlier, playing some Pokemon Go. Fun time this weekend because the Ultra Beast Nihilego is going to be back again uh, this weekend, or this, or it's currently out this week, and so I'm going to be going out with some of my friends to catch one, which will be nice. This, that. Is if you can protect the crystal? True. If I can never beat the Kenneth crystal, then I'll have a bit of a problem, but I'm hoping I'll be able to get it through. Are you able to battle wild Pokemon in Pokemon Go? No. You are not able to battle wild Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Sneak, sneak attack DPS guide coming soon. Yeah. But no, you can't battle wild Pokemon in Pokemon Go. The way that your Pokemon level up in Pokemon Go is by catching catching more and then using the candy to level them up. Is how it works. Uh, I have two Pokemon I want to catch this month. There is Nihilego, which is this week. And at the end of the month is one of my favorite Pokemon for inexplicable reasons that I can't explain. Um, the Pokemon um, Heatran. I don't know, I've just always liked Heatran. Like level team looking for the flame clit set bracers? Well, it means you can help other people get towards their goals, right? That's the trick. 10, 16, 12. Look at that huge sneak attack damage. My character is like basically zero. Go, Tobias, get him. Oh, it's so slow. Uh. I will actually have enough points to be able to take Shadow Blade because I'll have eight points by the time I finish level two. Um, the problem is I won't have Maximize, so until I get to level three, my Shadow Blade is not going to be very good. So I think I might get the Dark Wolf here. You train in the background in a Pokemon Center? Yeah, I don't know why. It's not a great Pokemon. I've just always liked it. Well, to be fair, the random build that I played started at level 1 with Artificer, and Artificer at level 1 means you have access to a repeating crossbow, which is one of the highest yield level 1 weapons. It just hits three times. So it makes it quite good for that purpose alone. Is this a Charisma build? No, it is not. This is a Wisdom build. The classic solo guided caster ranger. As I said, I don't really have a, a better way to speed this up other than like fast forwarding the footage. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, if you didn't know, there's in the settings, you can actually increase the speed at which you watch the video. That's right. Save yourself some time. Are you using a Shadow Blade? Yeah, if it was Charisma, I could use the Shadow Blade. You might be wondering, well, why wouldn't you go Charisma instead? I need Wisdom to cast Ranger spells. So, I can't be a caster ranger if I don't have wisdom to cast ranger spells now, can I? Okay, so I'm going to grab the Dark Wolf Companion for the interim. And we're going to see if that helps me a little bit. Now, a fun thing you can do with the Dark Wolf Companion, even though it's level 1 and it's not amazing, is I can get it ship buffs. So what I can do is I can head to the ship and I can buff up the... If I click the ship buff thing, the wolf will actually get my ship buffs. The downside is that if your wolf ever dies and you have to resummon it or it gets stuck somewhere and you have to resummon it, that's also a problem. Grab the imbue. The imbue is not too bad. Bleed the weak's okay. So I could do that. I could take the point out of Fade Arc Illusionist and put it into the imbue instead to get a little bit of extra de melee damage, which is not that bad of an idea. I think that's actually pretty good. Because Bleed the Weak is not a huge amount of damage, but it is basically an extra D8 damage per hit. And it's not affected by the modifiers of this league. Also, I believe the Imbue affects your Wolf. So the Wolf will also get the Imbue as well. 
So in theory, this should make it an easier solution here. Import, I, I didn't like think about how I was gonna level this character um, because when Cruiser leveled it, he leveled it with the party. So for the first 10 levels, he didn't really have to do anything because he had blight casters. And then once we got to epics, he was doing more of the damage um, because this character definitely scales harder later. Just it's it's not as good in the earlier earlier experiences here. That's all. So you know this is a slower process, but just remember if you worry and you're like, oh man, my leveling up is slow. It's okay. Don't worry about leveling fast. It's not a race. You can take your time. Have fun playing DDO. Or don't have fun. Whichever one you find most enjoyable. All right. So now I have my hireling who can cast bless. Which will work on both me and my dog. So now my dog is also blessed and has a much higher hit chance. Plus one. You can feel the life saving heat emanating from the Alright, there we go. I got Dark Wolf, I got Tobias, I got myself with the Bleed the Weak. I just want to beat this dungeon. <laughs> I just want to beat the dungeon. Go, my minions. I mean, that seemed to go pretty quick. Do it on hard? Never. Yo, that my wolf crit for 25? Beautiful. Does he have any powers yet? Nope. He just has movement speed. Okay, so they're going to go maul this guy. Get him out of here. I intimidated. No, you can't attack. No, no, intimidate. Oh God! All right, go, go, my minions, maul that guy. We have more damage now. It's like way more damage, it's like triple almost. Just worried about one mint monster coming in here and attacking. My wolf is stuck and unable to get around the doll, the door. Perfect. All right, keep going. We got this. Is this guy here? Intimidated, failed. It's okay, he's dead. No problem. Cure up myself, cure up this guy. We're all set. Everything is good. I believe. Again, my only issue right now is the fact that I'm I'm on a I'm on a defensive time limit. Resist that magic missile. Bottom of the ninth. Oh, God. Bower minion. He was going for the crystal, but not today. Not against me. You can swarm this room all you want, but you'll never get past the wall of Tobias, Solo Guided Caster Ranger, and Dark Wolf. Anyway, we're good. The last guy spawns right here. That's right. It just, all it took was a lot of patience and a bit of a retooling. Again, this character is supposed to be a caster, but casters aren't very good in the early game, especially since they don't get any spells till my character doesn't get spells to level three. So, you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mixed bag, as it were. Now, against for for Baldur the Bold, you always want to take the Bracers of Spearbane. Because the Bracers of Spearbane uh, protect you from piercing attacks, which is the majority of the attacks in the early game. A lot of orcs use spears, pretty much every kobold use spears, their claws count as piercing. Um, so piercing damage is very, very common in the early game, so that's where spears come in handy. Arrows, piercing, yeah, basically everything. So it's uh, super valuable to have uh, the ability to resist piercing damage. Now here, my minions will actually take care of pretty much everything for me. So I don't have to worry about the traitorous Jacoby Drexelhan. It cannot be. Again, thank you so much for everyone that participated in the Jacoby Drexelhan t-shirt contest. Uh, well, the Dungeons and Dragons Online t-shirt contest that turned into the Jacoby Drexelhan t-shirt contest. I don't exactly know what happened there, but you know what? It was It was a good time. Everyone had a good time, so that's all that really matters. Anyway, with this gaggle of minions, I shouldn't really have any trouble getting through the early levels, because even if it'll take a little bit of extra time, and the fact that the Dark Wolf can't handle this bar, uh, my character should be able to get through this, no problem. Yeah, now we just have to wait for Sandstone Games to, um, you know, make the t-shirt, the make it real. I would love to make one of those t-shirts, somebody was asking. Um, if I was going to make one of those t-shirts real and sell them, 
Um, I can't do that because I don't own Jackie B. Drexel hand. So I am unable to do that. Treasure chest, something good. Ooh, I got even more mana. 24 spell points. Holy moly. Cast so many spells now. One of the officers was messing around telling people they needed to join YWK. People asked to join in YWGK. Yeah, I mean, people people will do, you know, people like to tell jokes. They like to have some pranks. You own him every time you meet him. I don't think that's exactly the same way, but, you know, we'll see. I'll, I'll try it in, in uh, civil court when I get sued. And I'll be like, but your honor, I beat Jackie B. Drexel in every time. He gets owned. So I, I feel like since my internet vernacular uh, matches up, that should count. And the judge is going to be like, <coughs> guilty. You know, it's going to happen. Another rando build? No, this might look like a randomly generated character because of how bad it is, but no, it is uh, it is sadly a pre-planned solo guided playthrough. Sentence to death? Yeah, but for who? For you. Oh no! God. Unfortunately, I don't get sneak attack damage when I'm by myself, which makes me very sad. I need my teammates here. Bias. Dark Wolf. I could give the Dark Wolf a name, I just didn't. Do you think SSG will sell Jacket before? I don't think they're gonna do it at all. I don't know. I find like a lot of corporations just have this like stuffy image, but they don't want to make anything fun. Like I'd be okay to like not so much make a bad product, but make something that's like stupid. So like if I was allowed to put the best design on there on a t-shirt and have people buy it. I would totally do that because I don't know, it's just something dumb and funny and some people would want to have like just this dumb t-shirt that's just a zoom in of Jack B. Drexel Hint's face on the American flag. Why would somebody want that? I don't know. But some people would and I think that's kind of kind of entertaining. But like a lot of companies are just like too stuffy and wouldn't want to like put their name on a product like that. They'd be like, no, it must be officially branded something and make it all specific and to order and it's got all, all the right colors. I'm going to assume that judge still found you guilty? That's correct, yeah. In a civil case, guilty and sentenced to death. It's unfortunate how it happens sometimes, but hey. world is a complicated place. Merging meta build? Yeah, the old caster. The old caster non-caster? Yeah. Yeah, the problem with this character is the 8 strength, 8 dex start. It's really a lot better when you have a party. Remember, the whole point of this, this showcase here is to show you how you can level successfully if you have literally nothing and your character's bad. Oh, they're gonna send Pikmin after me? Oh god. I never beat Pikmin 3. Oh, uh, I don't need any of these. So I'm gonna take the ring that gives me spell points that I can't use. Much safer, but only temporarily. It's time to take the fight to the Sahuagin. Okay, so now we want to take the, the fight to the Sahuagin. And to do so, um, I'm not going to use the Tempest Tree. I need this tree. The Beacon of Hope Tree. You see, the Beacon of Hope Tree gives access to Good Hope. One point into Good Hope means it's a buff that can work on myself and everybody else, and it adds plus two to hit and damage. It's basically heroism, as well as the ability uh, plus two to all skills. This is essential because my character has bad skills, uh, so I'm getting, getting heroism effectively for free is very, very convenient. The downside is it lasts only one minute, and it only affects me and not any of my allies, which is a little unfortunate, but it's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Don't think about what I just said. Everything is fine. I've got lots of spell points and I can cast this every minute, no problem. It's just going to be, like, mildly annoying. <laughs> I'm also going to need to make sure I cast that before I, um, like, sell anything to get a little bit more cash. It does counter and dispel Crushing Despair every time, even though it's only being cast at level 1. True. Yeah, for whatever reason, this spell doesn't have, like, a default minimum of 5 minutes, which would be nice. Um, also, because Bless is, I believe, a morale bonus, it doesn't stack with Good Hope, which I believe is also a morale bonus. So I actually don't need to cast the Bless. But I'll take plus 2 to hit and damage. Not bad. Now my damage is plus 2. And apparently I'm somehow plus 17 to hit which doesn't make any sense to me. 
When my character gets to level 2, it'll be a little bit stronger. Just because at level 2, I actually get to add my wisdom to hidden damage. So my damage will go from plus 0 to plus 6. And my character will be okay at melee for a little bit. Even though I'm playing caster, dark hunter, ranger, I'm probably not going to be a caster until like level 5. This is going to take a little while. You say bad. I say my only option. See the difference there? All right, so there's a trap here. Whoa, God! Fortunately, the box is right here. If you decide... Whoops, it's over here. If you decide to disable the trap, a Sahagin will pop out of the darkness and come and attack you. Very scary. You've got to be careful about that. The sound of distant snoring. Options are terrible, bad options are what's left. And that's what this character is all about. You might be like, wow, Stream Tom, I've never seen a character level so slowly. Oh, baby. You ain't seen nothing yet. Wait till we get to adventures, like with all the kobolds, where there's like 30 of them in each adventure. Oh, it's going to be great. Now, the reason why I'm doing all of these quests is, one, I need some more experience points. They're not terribly difficult, and I can get some worthwhile pieces of equipment. One of the main ones I want to pick up is the boots that give me increased movement speed, which will be very helpful, and a few additional treasure chests here and there. Now, granted, there's not that many treasure chests, but that's okay. Sneak through here and crack open the secret door. I could go around, but I can save some time thanks to the search that my character happens to have. Allowing me to close this door, and then boom, we're all set. Much manual XP is always nice. It is always nice. I'm also going to show you the Korthos XP run. It's basically the route that I take to make sure I always get um, all the explorers done in Korthos Island. It's like an extra 1,000 XP in the early game. Back in the day, when I was like a dumbass little kid, I used to do it every time because getting experience points was really hard. And so it was, uh, it was something I did every single time to ensure my success. Now, you don't have to swim underwater here. If your character has a low constitution, every character at level 1 gets a ring of water breathing, so you should have no real excuse for drowning. Some people do drown sometimes. I don't know why that happens, but um, you can prevent yourself from drowning for free every time. Use this little ring of water breathing. It lasts for a minute and a half. And then, once I have that set, again, you, you start with this. Uh, and then you can go, whoop, and you're all set. You spot a rusty hat. Then you're all set. Also, a lot of people don't know this because they get stuck um, and they drown a lot. If you do drown a lot, uh, in uh, the potion shop in House Jurasco, they sell water breathing potions that can be drank underwater. You can drink potions underwater, so you never have to worry about drowning ever again. Just drink your potions underwater and you'll be all set. Don't critically hit me, you jerk. Hey, I'm trying to loot this chest here. Get out of here, bad guys. Ever drowned? Yeah. Some people drown in... Oh, so the grotto has a thing that prevents you from dying. But if you're in the grotto, um, you can actually still drown. Okay, so there's traps here. You gotta be careful about it. However, there's this scary spider. The trick to dealing with it without disabling the traps, because I don't have time to disable them, is just to come back here. Spider will eventually walk beyond the traps, and you can just go get them. Also, your hirelings are great for this section, because you have to slip and slide up and down this stupid ramp, but your hirelings don't. They just get to stand there. They can beat up crack for you. Alright. So there's several traps here. Now, there's lines of traps on the walls that don't actually activate. They used to activate, but they don't for some reason. There's just these traps here, so you can time them. However, you can still disable these traps for a little bit of experience points if you want. I already got the one earlier, and you can notice I get this new neutralization bonus. So the trick to dealing with this trap is you just wait for it to go, and then you go. Oh, did, they, did that disable these? Did they change the traps in here? There used to be, like, two traps here, two traps here, and then traps here. I guess that disables this trap. Interesting. They must have changed that since the last time I did it. Well, anyway, you can disable those traps. There you go. I even I learned something. Has failed. Yeah, it's because my concentration. Anyway, solve this puzzle right quick, and you're on your way.
That's right, Korthos is safe. Okay. So I'm going to use my Tiger here and avoid stuff. You can fight a lot of the monsters along the way if you want. You know, obviously it depends on where your energy levels are at and what you want to do. Uh, but I don't really need to fight any of these mon these, this, these monsters. So I'm just going to kind of ignore them the entire time. He's always disabled the front spray. What are you talking about? You can't gaslight me. I've been playing this game for longer than you've been alive, son of Jim. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, probably not longer than you've been alive. That's, that's probably... Probably too too long. Um, also, if you tell your pets or hirelings to stay in a quest and then you leave it into an adventure zone, they'll actually stay in the adventure zone uh, or in the old previous quest. You have to call them to you, or else they like bug out and despawn. Uh, also, I now have these expeditious boots that I picked up, which gives me expeditious retreat once a day, so I can just move a little bit faster, which is very convenient. You could have on early on site dementia. That's true. You could have early on site dementia, but also not. All right, so in previous uh, leagues, I've shown you how to get past all these traps, but here I'm going to show you where the boxes are. So in previous uh, solo guided playthroughs, I've been like, here's how you time this. I don't need to time it because I can disable it. Boom, trap disabled, game over, I win, you lose. Goodbye, Laurentia. The other trap box should be here, I think. Yeah, right here. And then same thing. Don't need to disable the, uh, you know, figure out the timing. I can just walk through. Who cares? I blame Drink Souls. Yeah, me too. creature that you refreeze i've zoomed in on it the kind of what is it it's just a it's just a, a bigger troll model that's all it is it's just a troll model that they made really big yeah it's just a troll i think it's a scrag because it's blue but yeah it's nothing special it's just a troll A lot of people really want there to be a epic Corthos Island or a legendary Corthos. I don't really want that because I, if I'm going to do legendary content, I'd like to do something else unless they have a really good reason for making a legendary Corthos. Like if they made legendary Corthos, it would basically need to be an entirely different set of quests. I don't want to go to any of the same familiar areas or if I do, like every adventure in Corthos Island should be one big quest that loops around. Um... Like, that would be ideal. Like, imagine the entirety of Corthos Island was remade into one epic quest. So you could go to the island, and each of the doors on each of the areas would lead to a different room within the quest itself. So you, like, enter in the front door, and then there's, like, demons or some other monsters or something. That would be kind of cool. Now, there's this tre special treasure chest back here. And I'm going to open its lock right quick. Go up to the door. Open lock. And we're done. Now, you might notice that these um, things aren't moving. It's because I disabled that crystal. It turns out if you actually disable the crystals before you come in here, the uh, Iron Defenders don't move. If you go in there ahead of time, they're actually still moving around and doing things. Also, did I get goggles of Deadly One? Eh, yeah, buddy. Who in the flame are you? Huh. Wouldn't you like to know? Found me. Your answer, we all know Jackie B. Drexland swears to come back. Anyway, I'm gonna grab a glass of water real quick. I'm gonna let my guys handle this. So mm -hmm. everything should be fully good. Yeah, looks good. Looks like a good experience. Look, guys, I just need to get a glass of water. I'm just giving Lars Hayden center stage, you know? And I need really need a glass of water. There's still content. There's still things happening. I mean, I guess, yeah, I could be helping, but... Which is funny, because eventually he says that, and then they, like, very quickly stop. I guess it's because they must be upset about how many soldiers they've sent. Like, I don't know how many legions of Zogan happen to be out there. Man, we killed, like, 20. So, 
I can see them being like, it's like, sir, we sent 20 uh, soldiers against this one guy and they're all gone. Like, oh, damn. Oh! That was slain by a dire bear at 24. Where are you getting slain by a dire bear at 24? I don't know where that comes from. All right, so you talk to Lars Hayden. You can actually recall before he finishes his dialogue. Druid's Deep. Oh, Druid's Deep final boss, yeah, of um, Thorn and Paw. Um, people die to the bears in there all the time. Yep. Because what happens is they knock you down, and then you just get beaten up. You can't do anything, because the bears are, like, chain knocking you down. So you need knockdown immunity, or you do what I did when I did it, is I stay out of the room. Do the secret there. I just want to stay out of the room. Don't go in the room. Stay away from the room. But that's where you want to be as a way. You don't want to be in the room, you want to be out of the room. Slightly obscured by the falling water. You enter a musty hall, heavy with silence. Yeah, if it turns out like Arch Lich Jacoby Drexelhand was still around, I mean I'd be okay with that, I guess. Were those remastered? Yeah, that's what we need. In the corner, you see the glint of metal as the secret door slides open. So the trick here is I'm basically not going to fight any of the monsters. I'm just going to let my minions kind of start to tackle things. Um, and then I'm going to try to kill them in like a big ball when I get the chance later. God, my damage is low. Also, my minions are stuck. They're not doing anything. It's kind of weird. Oh, I guess they don't know what to attack either, so they're kind of like freaking out. Tobias is just getting hit in the back. And now that the door is open, they're like, all right, let's go. And they just have a nice big brawl. Get them, team. Go. Actually, Tobias, get a prayer or bless. That'll help everybody. Unfortunately, I can't get Tobias to turn undead. There is a hireling that actually has turned undead. I don't know if it's good enough to actually turn anything, but maybe it is. The carver on st steroids. Goddamn Legion of Drexelhand. Yeah, maybe he clones himself. Maybe it's alternate timelines. Maybe Jacoby Drexelhand got a hold of the Chronoscope and has decided to team up with all the Jacoby Drexelhands across, you know, multiple different timelines to try to take revenge against the, the player characters. Yeah, exactly. I've all it's I've always been Drexelhan the entire time. Nothing but Drexelhan. Yeah, he just like steps back and forth. All evil and menacing. Which is funny, because he's just some stooge. He's just some dude who sucks. Alright, Rixville. Get him out of here. Got skeletons. Got my dark wolf with me. I can't go down. I got Tobias on the way. I guess it's actually better for me to heal myself and let Tobias do the damage than for me to actually, um, you know, do damage because Tobias hits way harder than I do. Get him, Tobias. I'll keep you alive. You melee. Maybe I should have grabbed like a melee hireling or something and just played healer. Well, interesting questions. I'm also not sure if my pet's even actually doing anything. Also, my team is very bad at fighting skeletons. Oh, God. Don't worry. We're about to fight the Trey Tortoise track Jack B. Drexelhan, so. He convinced Vecna. Jack B. Drexelhan became Vecna. Where did Vecna come from? An alternate timeline, Jack could be Drexelhand, ended up becoming Vecna and then drifting across the universe. Drifting across time. It's genius. Here we go. It cannot be. Cannot be. Not alive, but not quite dead. And now we wait. As it takes a little while for this guy to actually go down. He has a fair amount of hit points for, like, you know, a Corthos Island boss. So it just takes a little while since my damage is bad. Do you explain why Vecna is obsessed with Ebron? I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't really have a good excuse other than that. 
Oh no, Tobias, get back up. I need you, Toby. Do you think Tobias turns in becomes the pirate uh two toed Tobias? Or do you think they're unrelated? Beautiful. That this quest took way longer than I thought it was going to. Of all the quest durations, I thought this one would not be as long as it was. It was like almost five minutes of just wailing on monsters. Uh, again, this is not the fastest way to level up, but it it works well enough. If I had taken level three, I'd actually be dramatically stronger because I'd have wisdom to hit damage with my main weapon, which would give me an extra six to hit and to damage. But you know, we'll get there when we get there. Also, there's Zier. Hello, Zier. It is, in fact, a way. Hey, and you know what? Where there's a will, there's a way. Sick. Cool treasure. All right, so I've got three explorers, but I told you guys I was going to get all 12. Well, let me show you how. First, just tag this little corner here, and boom, you get the rumbling falls. Instead of having to throw yourself off the ledge. Then we're going to circle back up this way. You might be wondering, why would you kind of hook around over here? Well, there's this little camp. We're going to go talk to Vess the Peddler. Boom. Hey, Vess, what's up? Then we're going to slide up here over to this broken off, unfinished aqueduct. And guess what? Boom! The dilapidated aqueduct location. Six of twelve. I'm basically halfway done, and that was so fast. Then, this is much faster because you have access to mounts. I'm going to mount up and just ride right up this mountain here. Um, oh, it's just Warforged that have the uh, mount turning bug. That's interesting. I'll have to, I, I, I broke and ported that, but i got to make sure it's specific to Warforged. Uh, then we're going to come down here because there could be a special spider. There is an ice spider, but it's not the rare, so I don't really care about it. There's a rare ice spider that can spawn there. Then we grab this little shrine to the devourer. That's right, they're evil gods. And now we're almost done with our explorers. We only get a few. The Tree of Sacrifice, the Lookout, and only four more to go. So just by walking around, I got an extra 800 experience points. It's almost as much as that entire quest I just did. And now we go into sacrifices to save not only Arissa's store, but also pick up a golden piece of treasure, which I will personally be picking up because um, it's actually not too bad for my character. Hey, Tobias, do you want to do anything today, Tobias? I'm like mashing the button. He doesn't want to do anything. All right. I think that sometimes I just randomly hit for like 12. I definitely shouldn't do any damage, but it's just nice. The game gives me, gives me a little bit of free damage. Good Hope Cure Clinical Depression. Um, it cures... Uh, no. Real Good Hope? Well, it wouldn't really cure. It's more like a, it's more like it, it's like a treatment for. It's not really a cure. It like treats it treats the symptom, you know. It, it's not it's not out here gonna like take it away because hope is hope is temporary. But depression, well, that one lasts a long time. All right, so if you want to get yourself some extra special goodies, you're gonna climb all the way across this top area and look at that on Hardcore League. So there's an extra golden chest. Ooh, important if you're watching this after Hardcore League is over. Um, the extra golden chest does not give you anything special. Um, other than the reward for hardcore specifically. It's not like there's extra loot in here you can't get. So if you watch this later and you're like, but I can't get the special chest, uh, don't worry, you don't need the stole stolen dragon fragment. Also, I just got medium armor, which is better for me than light, and it has devotion, which infects my ability to heal, which is very good. Wow, that's lucky. All right. You feel better for a couple of minutes before you drop back into dark depression? Yes. If you're wondering why I got them to stay, it's because those those guys don't aren't good at pathing over ledges. Now there's a trap here with a trap box right here on the left side, so you can disable this right away. One of the benefits of Dark Hunter Ranger is that wisdom is very high for you. It's your highest stats. Your spot is going to generally be high enough to find all of the traps. And on top of that, your um, as a ranger, you get bonus to spot from one of your ranger spells get spot items fairly easily, so you should be comfortable keeping up on that. Who stole the dragon sword and which dragon is it? I, uh, we don't ask those types of questions. Sometimes when you get stolen goods, you just kind of have to just look the other way, you know what I mean? Unless you immediately recognize it, you gotta go, alright, yeah, I can do this. 
Being a fence is a is a difficult business, you know? It's a difficult business. Big pack for the mount? Yep. Oh, 100 percent Like I I'm riding around on it because I already have it. But as I said in my video when covering it, um, you know, given the fact that it's a you know, basically an eighty dollar mount, it should definitely have a better cost for it. Or like it should do more, and especially the fact that it didn't release with the dance is shameful. Those vendors know automatically what's stolen, what's not. Well, yeah, they're omniscient. That's part of the power. When you become a shopkeep in the Elder Scrolls, you put on you get a special signet ring. It's sort of like you know how engineers they get that iron ring when they finish school. So it's the same thing. Um, where in Elder Scrolls they get an iron ring of mercantilism, and it lets you know whether things are stolen or not. All right, so the reason why I walked here instead of recalling is because this puts me over here on the other side. You come out of sewer pipe on the other side of the mountain. And that matters because I'm going to go pick up the last three explorer locations. The first one is located just over here. So we're going to climb up this hill, and then boom, I got the watchful vigil. And then... We're going to slide over this way. And over here, we have the Sohagen Lookout. Almost done. And 50 bank slots. Yeah. I The shared bank, I like. The character bank, I don't even care about. I'm probably never going to claim it. And there's a rare here. Vex Splur. So I kill Vex Splur. He gives me a treasure chest loaded with trash. And then we can head into this tree. For every character? No, it's just for one character. And then for reasons I don't understand, you can actually recall while on a mount. So I'm going to recall while running around. And there we go. Just a little bit more experience points. Now we talk to Ursa Jvernsbird, and she's going to give me a uh, feather cloak. I'm going to go talk to Viggy Store, and I'm going to talk to him for one of my favorite items in the game, the Anger Step. You could take one of these other things. In theory, I could probably take, like, the Troubleshooter's Goggles if I really wanted to to get the extra search and spot. Um, the problem is the Troubleshooter's set, it gives you, uh, what is it, plus one insight bonus to open lock and disable device, or plus three insight bonus, which makes me think it's actually not a terrible idea to get. So I, uh, I probably should take the Troubleshooter's set, which means I probably should do Misery's Peak. Oh, I just convinced myself to do Misery's Peak. I'm upset with myself. Well, we're going to do Misery's Peak. It is what it is. It is the peak of misery. My misery. Anyway, hello, Meldrick. I'm bringing my second level as Favored Soul. The reason I'm going to do that is because uh, it gives me access to some special powers. And I now have Wisdom to hit and damage from Knowledge of Battle, which is very nice. And I also get access to Maximize, which I'll need for my spell-like abilities, which I'll be taking later. I also get another spell, which I don't need. I guess I'll take Protection from Evil, because Protection from Evil can come in handy, as it makes me immune to several different effects. So now this is where, basically, I want to start using the Shadow Blade, but for now, I think I'm just going to go for some of the more healing-oriented effects and kind of get away, get the Shadow Blade later. So I'm going to be going for Close Wounds so I can have an instantaneous heal so I never really have to worry about death in any capacity. So that's going to be my current goal here. Um, I can get a higher level Hireling, so I'm going to do that. Let me go quickly dash over and also sell some stuff. Another death? No, I did not die. I just finished all of my goals in Hardcore League, so now I'm doing a solo guided playthrough to show people where to go and what to do. But with a trapping character this time. I quickly sell since I'm in the I'm in the place here. Heavy Steel Shield. This is a plus two of Vitality. Uh, vitality gives me more health, so I actually do want to wear that over what I'm currently wearing. So I'm going to grab that right now. Uh, I don't know where it is, though. Oh, there it is, right here. Uh, it's a club. That's a club. This is a pair of boots that gives me Sheltering 3. Sheltering 3 is 3% less damage taken, so I'm going to have that in my inventory, and I'm going to swap to it when I need to. But the cloak is Feather Falling. I don't really care too much about that. I'll get something better. I don't need this. I have an extra Rugged Belt. I don't need this docent because I can't wear them. Arrows and bolts, discarded ring. The deadly gives me one extra damage per strike, which is okay. I do like the troubleshooter's goggles. I just don't need them right now, so I'm just going to use the deadly for this one adventure. I don't need the eagle splendor potion because I don't use charisma, and I don't need the wand of sleep. We're all set here. 
I probably actually don't need this potion either because I have so many spell points, I'm never going to run out. I'm also going to put on this one or this ring, which gives me kinetic lore, which will be good for my force spell power or force critical as well as false life seven, which is not too bad. And then I'm going to buy a slightly higher hireling. And I like the favorite soul hirelings because they're usually, or like the favorite soul of the clerics, as I said, because they're usually pretty good. They do a reasonable amount of damage. So we get Erethin Veridin. Why? Because everybody uses Aliri because she's the gold seal hireling that was available in the past. So I'm just going to use Erethin uh, Veridin because why not? And you get a permaban. That was easy. Ah, uh, the things you get to deal with as a Twitch streamer. Uh, okay, so let's go and do Misery's Peak. That was easy. Side bonus because it doesn't stack with gloves of the dinger. Mm. Well, hopefully it's not a um, competence bonus because it says insight bonus. Because if it's just plus three to open locks and disable device, that would be kind of annoying since the other piece gives bonuses to open lock and disable device. But we'll see. Either way, I'm gonna need it regardless. This is actual caster dark hunter solo guided playthrough. Also, because I leveled up, it unsummoned my wolf, which means my wolf lost its ship buffs, even though I didn't take a ranger level. And the wolf doesn't get more powerful, because it only gets more powerful when you take ranger levels. How fun is that? You come across a makeshift hammer. A you do the hand while thing you did like vengeance. when you swapped the shield of scorpion from fighter to bard. A bone oh, like where like I take gear from my other characters because I don't want to farm it out. Um, I could. I don't have a reason to do that, but I could. Also, I forgot to talk to Amalgam. Where are you, Amalgam? Also, Linda was slain by Grotkin, a higher level character. What are you going to do? Alright. I have to resummon my wolf, so get him up here. I'm Julian, I I apologize. I really don't understand what you're talking about. I'm like missing something. You're here. Come. There's some people dying to Von 3 this season. Um, a lot of people don't want to buy anti-beholder crystals, which I can kind of understand because I also wouldn't want to buy an anti-beholder crystal. But for how inexpensive the points are, it's so worth it. Yeah, I, since I don't know if I can get actual trapping gear, the only guaranteed piece I can get is from, uh, oh, right, I forgot, I have to take off my weapon and put it back on again to get the wisdom and damage to count. There we go, now I'm plus 24, so my melee damage is a lot higher now. When I first came out, the pet dies, it loses all of its buffs, like augment summoning. It loses augment summoning too? Oh, that's hilarious. Bargaining for anti beholder crystals. Hmm. Yeah, the problem with the uncle beholder crystals is, uh, I, you know, they sometimes don't always work. Gotta be careful. I'm just doing a full round. Yeah, I don't normally do it. I just, I really need to make sure I do have at least one trapping item so I can disable stuff without it blowing up in my face. This character will have no fail disables, largely from the class itself, because there is an effect in Dark Hunter called the Lupine Instincts, which gives you search and spot. Oh, sorry, uh, search and disable device equal to your prime or your wilderness lore feats. And this character will have 15, so it's basically an extra plus 15, which means I can disable everything in the whole game. The problem is, I just don't have that right now. And so I need to do what I can in the short term to be able to get everything. I can not try aggro? Yes. Some of you might be thinking it's unfair to say, like, oh, well, they should just buy. Uh, anti-beholder crystals because if they just buy anti-beholder crystals and they'll and they'll be fine it's like well what if people don't want to spend the ddo points what if people don't want to spend you know the 50 cents or whatever the problem is by the time you get to von 3 it's impossible to have not done at least 200 favor worth of quests so you're always going to have 50 ddo points kicking around to be able to buy it guaranteed gloves of the tinker with two to three salt marsh rares rare clears 
What is it? Is it plus six? I think it's it's like plus six, right? The problem is I don't even know if my character can handle doing salt marsh rares. I could. I could try salt marsh rares. Because gloves of the tanker would be kind of nice. It's all four of them, right? Search, spot, disable device, open lock. Would I be tempted to do that? I would be tempted to try that out. That doesn't sound like the worst idea. It's definitely a good piece of advice if you're trying to go for the solo play. I don't super like farming, especially so early into the playthrough. So we'll see. 15 chests to get them. Well, that's three full rare clears. There's what, 12 rares, three full clears, average of about four to five each time. Yeah, sounds like three full clears. 15 chests. We're weaker than Elite Salt Marsh, or gotta make sure you don't pull too many mobs. Okay. Yeah, if it's if it's they're a lot weaker than the Epic Salt Marsh. I actually haven't done heroic salt marsh rare rare farming ever. You know what? That's not a bad idea. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. He clarified afterwards. He said, you could guarantee gloves of the tanker with two to three salt marsh rares, and then after he said rare clears, or rares clear. I I interpreted that as, like, full clears. But I could also, that could also be wrong. I don't know. Either way, you're not going to get it on your, in, I, I didn't assume that the answer was two to three, because you never get the item you want in two to three. Because there's also the salt pearl ring, there's the shield that drops out there, so there's, like, a lot of items you can get, so there's a good chance you're not going to get what you want. Thinking church dogs were on the landscape. Ah, good to know. Okay. Yeah, it's a salt pearl ring, which I don't really want. The shield, which I definitely don't want. Um and the uh and the tinkerer's gloves. I guess technically I could use it. Uh, if I got the shield. It'd be the worst. I get you healed. I'm just going to whip myself down here because I'm not going to take 100 damage. In fact, I took way less than 100 damage, which is nice. I'll take that. Is it to cost one crystal to reroll? Yeah, I'm not going to be using any shards um, because, again, I'm trying to do this on, like, the most budget way possible. But I'm going to get this, and then we'll farm it out and see how it goes. If it doesn't take too long, then I can recommend doing it for others. Exactly one crystal. I do have one, yes. I do have one. Um, so I could. I could reroll it. I'm just not going to. I just want to make sure it's like as fair as possible to, as I said, people that are like trying it out for the first time. Also, some people might not own Salt Marsh. So I'm going to do it for me, but I'm also doing this so I can have both of them kind of covered. Eat it all amount? Yeah. The cost of my mount doesn't impact my gameplay. You can get mounts for free from uh, Keep on the Borderlands, which is a quest pack. Do you deny this? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not farming the horse. It's mostly just about quest guides to help people get through. Um, if the goal is to make this the most painful experience, I'll never make another one of these ever again. I'm more of a. I'm more of a. You know. Um, it's one of the. It's one of the reasons why people have been like, "Oh, have you ever thought about like making a brand new free-to-play account, and seeing how long it would take to get everything unlocked?" I'm like, no. I've spent hundreds of dollars in my account. Why would I just walk away from that to be like, oh, I wonder how that how long it would take and devote three years of my life to that. I get that wasting time is something that a lot of people like to do, and I waste a lot of my own time playing MMORPGs and other things, but at least I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Watching, I don't know how fun it would be to watch somebody just like throw away three good years of their life, especially in my 30s, to just like try to do that. I don't know, man. It's just one of those things I just want to, you know, I need to, I need to make sure I'm at least doing something forward. There's a brand new life. That's correct. It's a brand new character. This is the solo guided caster ranger. 
fun to watch is whether or not it'd be fun for you to do if you weren't having fun it'd be terrible to watch yeah it depends so what some people have said that when i'm not having fun it is also entertaining to watch but um the other thing the one of the reasons why i never finished off getting over it with bennett foddy is because one it was causing me a, a great amount of stress but two even though some people were like dude it was so funny um uh, getting over it with Bennett Foddy is like the lowest viewership thing that I've played in a very, very long time. Because I guess a lot of people just tune out when they see streamer raging at the video game. Especially me. So I was like, ah, people aren't watching it anyway. I don't need to do this. It may have been funny for some, but not not for not for the views, man. Not for the business. Yeah, that was, uh, that was not a fun game. It was such a frustrating piece of shit. God, it's so annoying. Cause like you just get to this point where you feel like your your movements make sense and you're moving the guy with the hammer and everything feels good. And then all of a sudden at some point, you keep doing the same movements, but it's not the same. You're obviously doing something a little bit different, but the game is very sensitive. So you're doing something a little bit different. So then all of a sudden you feel like you're doing what you were doing before, but you're something different is happening on screen. And you're like, it's like, it wor weasels its way into your brain. Also, do you guys remember when SSG decided to add more monsters to Misery Speak? Like this pack that was never here before? Good classic times. Oh, Baldrick was slain by Gorlin. Gorlin, the final boss of the dungeon Black and Blue, who is exceedingly dangerous. A little understated. If I played, like... 10 hours a day every day, I think I could probably buy the content in three years. Probably. Oh, my minions farm these guys out. I definitely need to like make sure I don't have aggro on things to get more sneak attack damage. Uh, the patience. I will say, the character is still working, though. Like, it's slow, but it's not like it it's, like, non-functional. It's just slower than I would like. I'm not a two-handed weapon fighter over here. Some two dual wielder ripping through monster packs like it's nothing. Man starting as an elf with a 20 dexterity. And just tearing through dual wielding style. Ah, oh, dual wielding style. I technically could get two weapon fighting and put on a second longsword. The problem is I just don't have a second longsword. <laughs> I could guess I could go buy a plus one longsword, although I have... Oh! 666 Platinum! Oh no! Hey man, Cordovan beats quests. And so will I. This character will start to speed up eventually, I just, just, just not yet. The number of Kyber, yes that's correct. It's not the number of the beast, it's the number of Kyber. How many points do I need? Six and six. Uh, I need more than that. Uh, so when I'm level four, I have 16 points. So I can do... That's eight and eight. Okay, so by level four, my character should be a caster. By the end of level four. But it's going to be a bit of a wait and see on that one. Again, they added more monsters to this quest. I still don't understand why they added more monsters to Misery Speak. I always felt like Misery Speak was a long adventure in and of itself. Already, already almost killed a hundred people. Then they were like, "Yeah, let's go ahead and add more of them." I always found that very perplexing to me. It's definitely a weird, weird thing. Were people like, I don't know, just sprinting through misery speak and not fighting anything too too often? I don't know. This needs blood spilled. I mean, true. Yeah. I mean, these guys do sacrifice themselves to the devourer. I'm helping them reach that goal by, uh, you know, pushing them into the the old wood chipper. Also, I love how, like, hireling pathing is so bad that, like, the monsters can make their way up through any ledge or whatever, but the hirelings really struggle getting up and down ledges. In between the Narn Korthos village? Well, that's that's why. All, all the people in Korthos village just left. That's the other thing, too, when it comes to the cultists. So when I adapted this, uh, Korthos Island, into pen and paper, 
I had to really shrink down the number of cultists that you would find and make it mostly Sahagan because I'm like, it wouldn't really make sense. Or like I had to add like entire empty branch or I would have had to add like entire empty branches of the village because like the village had a fair amount of buildings in it. But even still, like the number of cultists in Misery's Peak, you know, 111 monsters killed. Even if a bunch of those are undead, that's still like half of them. That's like 60 people. It's like 60 people. That's so many. If you're wondering why I'm shrining, uh, it's not because I need mana. It's mostly just because I wanted my movement speed back. The amount of time it takes for me to shrine to get my movement speed back is worth it in the long term. It's how much faster I can run to the end of the quest. Although in hindsight, what I could have done um, is start this fight and leave my pets here, then go back and try and let them kill it and then come back. But, you know, whatever. Hey, look at these guys. They just run into their deaths. Also, I love how they just wear clothes. They're just wearing robes. These poor guys. The cult couldn't even spring for a chain shirt. Well, not anymore. They get their weekends off. Ooh, every weekend though? Like they don't even have to come in like some weekends? It's not bad. Or they got they probably got, you know, dental, you know, uh glasses or like op optometry up to five hundred bucks. Oh man, five hundred bucks a year. That'd be pretty sick. Zombies, get them out of here. All right. Now it's dentist, a hog and shaman. Yeah, I don't know if I trust the fish people to be a dentist, but you know what? Honestly, maybe they could do a good job. Don't judge a book by its cover. Never know. Maybe they would do a great job. You will obey. I wonder if people don't notice this fight going on down here. Where you break the mines under, and then the dragon is then free, of course. At which point, Astrochaix, the dragon, goes, Well, I don't want to deal with this. And just... The mind player can't control the dragon anymore. And then... And now the dragon's free. And then it laughs. Which is great. I love that I love the dragon goes like, ha ha ha, and laughs. Hey, what's up, bud? Oh, misery's peak. Like magic. Tell you what, that was the peak of my misery. Savior of Corthos. Couple of shooters necklace. Okay, so it's it is just a plus three. So you just basically get plus three to search and disable, which is like not the worst, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, physical resistance is probably pretty good. So I'm gonna grab that. I'm going to be moving up to grab the cure here, close wounds. But I'm going to be going to Salt Marsh because I want to see how long it's going to take to get the um, the Tinker's Gloves. For a point of reference. So I'm going to show you guys the rare path, the rare route in Salt Marsh, so you can learn know this route yourself as well. And I'll show you how long it's going to take to get the uh, Tinker's Gloves in Salt Marsh. If this is a good alternative. As opposed to doing Misery's Peak. If this takes less time than Misery's Peak, obviously it's amazing. Let's see what we got. So first, you're going to head over here and look for the rare that can spawn right here. There is no rare here. I also didn't summon my hireling, which might have been a bad thing to do. So I think I'm actually going to have to go back and summon the hireling real quick. Um, cause I, I'll, I'll do a round here, but I, I just want to make sure I have it because I'm, I'm going to need the extra support. Fisherfolk and sailors come to the thriving temple. Also, I do have my wolf. Okay, I have my wolf. You're looking for a chest here. I don't see a chest, so there's nothing going on here. So we're going to leave this and head over to the garbage pile. I guess you could probably get the explorers along the way, which clears off the whole map, which would be kind of nice. So I could probably show off. If I don't get it, I'll get the explorers on my second run. I'm going to swing right around some of these patches of crows so I don't have to fight them. And then I'm looking down here for a treasure chest. And I don't see a treasure chest in the dump, but I can go into the dump at the very least to get um, the location. 
I'm gonna quickly come over here, um, check out the catch of the day, which is another explorer, and I'm gonna resummon my or summon my hireling. Catch of the day. Okay. So you come in right here, so I should be able to summon the hireling here. I was like, can I summon a hireling on a mount? And the answer is no, you can't. Anyway, so now we're good. Also, I don't know what's still chasing me. There should be nothing chasing me, but... I hear the Saltmarsh combat music. By the way, I love the music in Saltmarsh. It's very good, very peaceful. I also like the fact that there's like this slow droning music that builds up, and then the combat music is the same theme, but just like higher tempo, um, you know, with just a lot of the horns blaring. It's cool. Anyways, so we're looking over here for a pathing um, fire beetle. And I don't see it, so I don't believe there's a fire beetle over here. Next up on the list is there is a building that is all the way out here. It's like a little little shack, and there can be a guy that's like obsessed with remnants. He's not there because there's trolls there, so there's nothing there. Another another dud. So now we're gonna run up this way, and we're looking for a um, shambling mound that can be caught just in the grass. Um, it'll be present with the treasure chest, and you'll be able to see the mound kind of sticking out of the grass. Somewhere around here. And it's right here, but it's not here, so we don't have to worry about that. Then there can be a Displacer Beast right here that's roaming around. There is no Displacer Beast, so currently I'm at 0 of 6, which is not ideal. It's pretty bad for the rare count, but that's okay, so we're not done yet. Then there could be a Manticore up here. It's not, so that's a... Uh, oh, okay, well, you know. There's 17, okay? There's 17. Massive cracks in the mud. Lead to a dark so now I'm going to look for the... There's like a Bullywug Chieftain that can spawn over here. Uh, he didn't, so that means we're missing one there. But there is this frog statue, so we're going to get the little frog statue. Very good. Uh, then there's this shrine. Get you some XP, so we're going to go pick that up. Mm -hmm. Lizard Folk Shrine, no problem. Uh, then there's another rare over here uh, in the grass that can spawn in here. And it is here. We got one. Nice. One rare. Beautiful. Let's roll. Me for lightning damage. That's unfortunate. He dies. I have to fight the rest of these salt marsh creatures. Unfortunately, the monsters out here aren't terribly difficult. They actually have less health than the monsters inside Misery's Peak, so it's not too bad. All right. And I got a tower shield. I'm actually not taking the tower shield because my strength is low. So as much as I would want to take it, although it is impulsive. And I like impulse spell power. Maybe I will take it and see if I can find like a strength item or something. Sorry to buy my strength. Anyways, next rare we're checking is over here. It's this box. This box is in fact a rare. Why was a box be a rare? Because the box is a water weird. War torrent. It's like war turtle. Maybe it was storm wrong. Uh, storm run. All right, so we grab this chest, and I got nothing. That's two rares, though. I'll take it. Plus, also, each chest is giving me a little bit of gold that I'm going to be able to spend on some stuff. Next up, there is a cat that can spawn over here, some type of large sea cat, which is not too bad. So I'm going to look for it. It didn't spawn, so I'm going to have to ignore it. Um, I'll actually get one of the locations that's over here. It's the sunken ship. You basically just have to go and jump onto it for one of the locations. So that's pretty easy to get. Just ride the old battle cat out to the ship. And jump on. The deck is littered with dead sailors. Uh, next place to check is uh, pretty far away, actually. The next rare is guaranteed. There's two guaranteed rares in Salt Marsh. So, in theory, you could just farm out those two, but doing the whole round will get a little bit more XP from doing all the explorers and rares. I'm already at 2,000 XP, which is not terrible. Uh, we can find the, the Sahagan Fortress, which is the location of the final enemy. Over here, there's also going to be a bunch of dead lizard folk died in some type of terrible battle. Bad for them. Good for me, because there's an XP explorer for it. There was a battle here. From the Next up, we have another sunken ship. This is related to a quest, but that's okay. I'm not doing the quest. I could do the quest out in Salt Marsh, but this character is bad, and Salt Marsh is really hard. I don't want to do that. But that's an interesting idea. Next, we have the Whaler. I don't think the Whaler is hard in Heroics, but we're going to find out, because I don't know. 
I don't think she's hard in heroics. And apparently she's not, so we're good. I'm being chased by a crocodile, so I gotta be careful about that. And we've got nothing. Alright, moving on. Gonna come over here, pick up this hidey hole here, get the little XP on the lizard folk layer. Um, and then I'm gonna do a bit of a circle over this way. There's a house I'm gonna be looking for um, in the distance over here. And next to it is going to be a big crocodile rare that can spawn. So this is the house, and the crocodile rare can be right over here. So we'll see. Is whaler not a whaler? Mm hmm. It is very funny. It's like a it's like a dry or some type of siren that calls to you and wants you to plunge yourself into the water, so it can eat you. And there's oozes here instead of the rare. Very fun. I like it when there's oozes instead of the rare that I'm looking for. Oh, no, it's here. There it is. Brine Lurk. Let me kill Brine Lurk, the giant crocodile. Honestly, it doesn't look very giant. It looks kind of like a regular crocodile size, but I don't know. I don't live in Florida. All right, next up is top of the hill here. Check out another rare. So it's four rares down, no named items. I believe the named item drop chance in Explorers is 10% uh, with a 1 in 3 chance, which means my average pull to get it is somewhere around 45 chest pulls. Uh, to solve this puzzle, it's 4, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2. So from right, left to right, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. I don't have Magic Missile Protection, which I have to put on myself, and I don't have my Hirelings with me, so they're going to be in quite a dangerous predicament. Oh no, Fireball. Oh god, there's so many monsters. bit big for gator but there's a croc that might be that big in the world we got nothing here unfortunate yeah you'd hope to see like one item this would probably go faster if you had a group of people or if you had like an alt account but you know doing it by myself it's not going to be quite as fast i'm gonna grab this giant skeleton here because it's a, lo a location the lighthouse out here is also a location i grab pretty much all of them the only ones i missed was i think the campsite at night is one i won't grab as well as the um the druid grove so i probably should have grabbed those since i was already running around it's so much free xp so why not well free it takes the time to walk around i think that's all i missed druid grove and then the quests haunted oh i didn't do the haunted house either so I could have actually had all of them in one go. Uh, I'll just have to get it again. Over here. Traver's Cove. And then up here is the, the old lighthouse, broken lighthouse. Ruined tower. Perfect. There could be a giant rare up here. There isn't. You can see there's trolls at this camp, so he's not there. And then the last rare to check is right here. The singer, which is in fact present. It's this team. So we come in here and beat them up, take their lunch money from Letitia Lesage. And then that's it. That is one full round. So one full round, 6,000 XP. Pretty good, if I'm being honest. And I got a fair number of chests. I didn't get anything useful, but honestly, not too bad. Now, the benefit of the tower shield is that I'm not proficient with tower shields, but it actually doesn't matter. You don't need proficiency with tower shields. Um, and this gives me four spell power, which I will need for my spells once I actually become a spellcaster. So that's going to be very cool to have. All right. So now we're going to do this again, except we're going to be pretty much just going after the rares, um, which will make this a little bit faster. I'm going to grab my hireling again, and uh, we'll see how long this takes. If I get to my third clear of all of the rares, and I don't have the thing found, I'm just going to keep going. But I am curious to see if I can get it in two to three. I found six rares, so we'll find out. I'll crack around Burundi. There have been many attempts to kill him, and nobody's ever really sure that the attacks are still him. 20 feet long and weighs 2,000 pounds. Yeah, because remember, crocodiles are literally dinosaurs. Like, they don't mess around. No, they, they had to deal with things way bigger than people. And a lot of people? But yeah, he's hungry. How do you think he gets 20 feet long? All right, nothing here from Nato Marlin Spike. I'm gonna go get the uh, location up here, just for the additional bit of XP. What are you looking for? The gloves, the Tinker gloves. A decrepit house stands atop the cliffs. 
It's plus six to disable the vice and open lock, which will be very handy for the future of this character. But it's okay. If I don't get it, it's not a big deal. I'll find a way around it. I'm also getting treasure along the way, so I can fill up my bag slots. So this isn't the worst. Looking for a rare, and there's nothing no rare here, so we can just skip this. Now that I'm just going for rares, it's going to be a lot faster. Less detouring out of the way. And there is no rare here in the dump. Damn, I was hoping there'd be a rare in the dump. The Audioc is very fun to fight. Audioc? 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, wasn't there like, there's like a zoo somewhere where they like feed the crocodiles well. And so because the crocodiles are well fed, they don't have the urge to eat like the capybaras that are kept in the same um, like environment as them. So they just kind of hang out and chill. I think I saw something like that or a video somewhere. Alright. Nothing on that one. Check this guy over here. And we got trolls, so it's not him. I'm going to go over this way. And there is a campsite. This burning campsite here is one of the rares or locations. I'm just going to quickly grab it while I'm on my way over here. You wouldn't normally do a detour out this way. But I figure since I'm at 19 of 21, it's so close. So I might as well pick it up. And now I'm going to be heading over looking for the uh, Shambling Mound. And if I don't find the Shambling Mound, then looking for the uh, Displacer Beast. If I don't find the Displacer Beast, looking for the Manticore. So there's always like another rare on the horizon. And you can see these ravens where the mound would be. It's this green pile of grass amongst all the yellow. So it's gone. Also, goodbye, Hreefen. There's Flicker. Now I've seen people die to Flicker in Heroics. So I don't know how dangerous this is. It does have displacement, so it might be really dangerous, given the fact that I haven't hit it yet. Um, so I'm kind of nervous about that. So I'm going to start killing all these ads here, just to reduce some incoming hits. Hopefully that'll make it a little bit better for me, since I haven't hit the Displacer Beast yet. I have yet to be able to actually land an attack on it. And it's going for its Paralyzing Tentacles right now, which is not ideal. Okay, we're able to get a couple hits on this bad boy. Okay, and it does want to go for me. Scary Displacer Beast, and it's gone. I'm going to Placatus once work is over. Yep. Oh, baby. That's a win right there. Masterwork Thieves Tools. So the way that the game decides which Thieves Tools to use, it's whichever's first in your inventory space. So that's why I moved the regular Thieves Tools back here. Because I want the Masterwork ones to get taken instead. I just checked up there. There was no uh, Manticore. So it's missing. Let me come down here. Look for the Bullywug Chief. And he's not here. So now we're going to go up this way and look for that uh, troll that could be in the water here. Water troll, water troll. He's not here because there's smugglers, so I don't care about that. And I'm going to get my last explorer, which is the uh, big druid grove up here. The cool thing about getting all the explorers, something you might not know, is that if you once you get all the explorers, by the way, watch what happens. Boom. Once you get all the explorers, the fog of war disappears. So if you never do that, you can actually now see the whole map all the time. Um, so you don't have to worry about that, about not knowing like where things are. So you wonder how they get like the whole map. People don't actually explore all the tiles. Just once you get explorers done, it, it reveals the whole thing. There's no water weird rare here, unfortunately. Going to check the cat. That should be good. Sea cat. Come on, sea cat. Be here. Sea cat. It's not. So now I head directly over this way. Going to kind of skim right through here. Didn't know that. Yeah, now you do. Yo, what's up, Brits? Uh, for areas that don't have explorers, but they have the notes, the same effect will happen when you pick up all the there notes. So as there opposed to the explorers. There was a at the How are you doing? How's your day going? And we have the whaler. Hello, whaler. Again, the Whaler is a guaranteed rare, so it's always here, which is not too bad to, for the farming. So you, you want to make sure you always hit the Whaler as well as the big demon. Your day just started. Nice. Okay, we got nothing. Let's keep going. I did get a Helm of Spot, which I guess I can wear. I'd like to get, like, an item of some amount of strength. I'm also going to lock these Feather Falling Boots, because having a single Feather Falling item is very convenient. I'm going to go check the Crocodile over here. 
And then if the crocodile is not there, I'm going to go up top of the hill. And then uh, we're almost done on the rare check. What's up, Dorn? How are you doing? How is your day going today? And we have crocodile. Yes. Gustav the man-eater. Also, I like that, I, Schnockers, I like that you weren't sure if Gustav was eat, would eat people because he was called Gustav the Maneater. I also had like a similar feeling where I was like, I was like, should I root for the crocodile? But, oh yeah, he's called Maneater. Makes ass outside, so indoors it is. So maybe I go on different places on the internet, but are snakes asses hot? Asking for a friend. Oh, don't climb up on the rock, dude. That's so bullcrap. What is this guy, a kobold? Oh my god, he's even higher on the rock now. <laughs> oh god. Okay, well, I've never had this happen before. I don't know what to do about this. He's just going higher up on the rock. Huh. Oh, I, I've never seen that happen. He didn't. He just stuck. I think the I think the monster is now stuck up there. I don't think it can come down. I went find the pillar. He just stands there. Well, at least it's dead now. I've never seen that happen. So I'm having a lot of firsts today. A lot of firsts. Very cool. Because usually it just implodes when you're doing it on epics. It just dies instantly. So I've never seen him climb up there. He literally had the high ground. It was terrifying. Living on a hot surface, probably. Yeah, probably. Um. Okay, and we got nothing. So back into the tavern we go. I can't do that underwater. Um, that was not smart of me. Feels dumb to recall here, but you know, might as well. Am I gonna make the recall, or am I actually gonna find the thing? I should have probably put up a prediction as to whether I was actually gonna find the um the tinker's gloves. But I'm on my last run through, so I said I'd only do three, and I found zero named items yet, which is not boding well for the whole, what are the odds you'll find named items sort of trick. Anyway, I now have closed wounds, which is nice. I'm going to be using closed wounds here very shortly. So why closed wounds? Because closed wounds um, is very low cost, and I can maximize it. So if to heal, I can go, and now I heal for 20 instantly. The benefit is that even if my character's damage is low and my character is bad um at the very least my character will not die and i can use hirelings and other things to help my success in the short term i may not be able to do this for the long term i think my plan is by the time i hit level six from six to eight i am likely going to just have to use fan of shadow blades to be able to get through content and then um be able to pick up close wounds by level eight and have to drop everything else, but we'll see. And to every bit of player gets a neat item or two. Yeah, I don't know why they put like a ten percent drop chance on, on items in normal. I don't like the ten percent drop chance on items in normal, just because there's a good chance that a lot of people who buy content don't even know that there are like special unique items in the game. Those have no idea. Like, if you buy Ravenloft and do it on normal, there's, like, a more than 50% chance you're not going to see a single named item in your entire playthrough. Which is, like... Named items is the bread and butter of Endgame. And it's just crazy. You might not even know that exists. You just get zero and not even know. Going for all the treasure? I mean, probably not, but I'm here, so... And all the treasure is in relatively good quests, like the pit and stuff, so... I believe to be killing stuff left and right. Yeah, I don't think so, but we'll see. Uh, bracers. All right. And currently at zero items so far, and I'm at a medium load. One benefit is that this character at four ranger will have access to, um, uh, what's it 
called uh, Ram's Might, so I get a little bit of extra strength, which helps with the load thing. But yeah, we'll see. Aha! A rare. I haven't fought yet. Hello, Planty. Morgnoth the Tangle. Uh oh, knocked down by wolves. Again, I can just kind of cure myself indefinitely, so I'm not really concerned about the amount of incoming damage that's here. The closed wounds just kind of gets the job done. I think I am just going to have to rely on the cure light wounds that I have for a little while, um, but we'll see how that goes. Well, I did just get a necklace of Search 3 and Con 2, which I can't currently wear, but if I could, that would be amazing. This is not a bad item, so I'll probably put this back here. How yeah, that goes. All right. Arilu! What's up? First time. How are you? It is cool that, like, Explorers let you go see a whole bunch of different monsters in low levels with, like, really low impact, which is kind of nice. The abilities don't really scale well. Has that been rectified? Um... Not really. The only thing is there's the Master of Shadow Blades feat that got added that increases the maximum cash level, so it works up to level 30 now. But that's about it. It's still not amazing, and they're definitely not as good as other stuff. I think the bigger answer is that there's been a couple new abilities that scale off of Force Spell Power and Epics that were added, so your Force is more useful. Also, goodbye, Quasi. Slain by Misadventure. R.I.P. You hate to see it. Okay. And we got another box. Let's go. A rare. Yay. So the only rare I haven't seen so far is the Bullywug. I haven't seen the Bullywug. I haven't seen the cat. Um, I haven't seen the skeleton graveyard. I haven't seen the audio. Okay, there's actually a lot of rares I haven't seen. Oh, did my dog die? Oh, he died. He straight up got one shot by that circle. <laughs> oh, poor guy. Miss bet. There you go. I can summon a new one. You cannot, the pet is dead and cannot be summoned until you rest at a shrine or tavern. Interesting. I don't know. That mechanic was in the game. Only one pack you don't have. Which pack is that? Oh, this one? Salt Marsh? Oh, yeah. Sorry. This is the only one. Yeah, you don't need Salt Marsh. I would agree. I like Salt Marsh. Um, especially because of the epic upgrade system, and some of the best gear can be gotten through Saltmarsh, but yeah. They're corrupting your youth? Yeah. I am. Man, this is a process, dude. Oh. This is a process. I'll be I'll be at this all day, so I'll see you guys in like a week or something. Oh my god, I'm still swinging my weapon. Oh my god, I'm still swinging the weapon, dude. Wow, that slow is crazy. Entangle. Can't get I can't get away from the entangle on my saves. My saves aren't actually that bad because um, fortunately, favorite soul gets a good bonus to all saves. Quarter staff. I don't think. So so far I've gotten zero items. I haven't gotten a single named item. So I think I'm in not so much the clear, the reverse clear. I think I can't recommend this to anybody. This is probably the worst idea ever. But now I tested it, so now we know. Yeah, I, I can I can recommend this currently to zero people to do this. This is the worst way to do it. Just go run quests and you'll probably get a, an item for dealing with traps and stuff on your own. The button the first time for R1. Nice. More Master Rick Thieves tools. And I got a shield. Heavy shield with magical sheltering, which is... I will take magical four over vitality three. Actually, I already have magical four. And I don't need large. i go for the tower later. Level's my tower. Three, okay. This ring of ancient standing stones commands Uber bad luck? Oh, I don't think I I don't think so. Don't climb the wall. 
Good boy. I have a job, money. Second step, buy gold rolls until camp. No. No, you can do this. All right. Let's crack open a chest and we got the tower shield, the skull of the sea. One of the only items I don't want to wear out of this quest pack. It gives 12 armor? Why does this give 12 armor? What? That's literally double what a regular tower shield would give at this level. Here. Oh well. Here's double armor. And there's no more rares. Alright, so that's every rare checked. Three times. And I got one item. So I cannot recommend this strategy to anybody. So if you are looking to... Uh, you know, get some trapping gear. I can't recommend salt marsh. Don't do salt marsh. It's a bad idea. So yeah, I should I would recommend you don't do this at all. So there's my recommendation. Anyway, I'm gonna use good hope here before I sell, so I get some more money and start selling. Skull of the sea is bad. I don't want that. Armor piercing, blah 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 blah. Anarchic of critical piercing. This is bad. These are all bad items. I don't need arrows. I don't need amulet inner focus. I don't need this stuff. I already I can't wear that. Um, I'd like to wear that, but I need my search bonus from my bonus from my goggles. Selling all the gems is good. I don't need regular thieves tools because I'm on masterworks now. I can sell this, and we're all set. Well, at least I have 2,700 platinum. So it's not all bad. Um, I haven't rested in a tavern, which means I don't I can't summon my wolf again, which makes me sad. What's up, Danik? How are you doing? How's Dark, Dark Hunter going so far? It's good. It's going well. It's like 1-1 one, one to stone skin. Yeah. Okay, that's a rest. I can summon my Dark Wolf now. Beautiful. There's Respect My Authority running out there. I don't know what they were, but... Are you going to have an adventure? What is Dark... Caster Dark Hunter? Oh. Don't worry. We'll get there. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, I can't recommend anyone ever do what I just did, so don't do what I just did. Please, thank you. Are you even doing that? Someone said that they got it in two to three clears, so I said, oh, I wonder if I can get it in two to three clears, and I found out that I absolutely could not get it in two to three clears. It was uh, not possible. So before I go into the harbor, I'm going to buy some potions of resist electricity. I'm going to buy like 20 of these, so that way I never have to worry about actually pressing them. And because I'm a wisdom base build, I'm going to grab um, Potions of Owl's Wisdom as well as Fox's Cunning. The Fox's Cunning is for disabling traps, so my trapping skills are higher. And the Owl's Wisdom, um, Potions of Owl's Wisdom, is just for my general stats. I'm going to buy these as well. It might sound weird to like fill up on potions, but potions can be quite valuable. Um, then on top of that, I'm going to buy a couple other potions to help me out here. First, I'm going to buy some Lesser Restoration. I'm just going to have five of these on hand just in case. I'm going to get Remove Curse Potions because you can get cursed. My will save is gigantic, and I shouldn't get cursed. But you never know. And that's all my money. So I'm basically out of money now. So I have this whole helping of potions. I'm going to drop these down here so I can just use them, you know, in my quests and in my adventures. And uh, just to have on hand. All right. I believe you only got one item. I can. It's only a 10% chance. I looted about 20 chests. So it's about right, yeah. Uh, do I need to buy a new hireling? Uh, nah, I should be okay for a bit. Uh, I probably have to... Well, actually, I can take level 4, so I can I can definitely buy a new hireling. Cool. So let's go to Ranger. I'm going to take another Dark Hunter level. Where are you, Dark Hunter? Over here. Hello, Amis Veldaren. Again, more wisdom, so I'm more powerful. Uh, so disable device, open lock, um, spot, search, and... Uh, probably heal is most important for me right now, so I'm going to do this. Alright, so I don't think I lose Wisdom to Hit and Damage from taking that level up. Because I'm still 50-50, because it's at least half of my level, but we'll see. I might lose it if I change my weapon, so... I'm going to keep the Wisdom to Hit and Damage from now, because it's quite handy. Also, I don't have any money, so I don't think I can buy a Hireling. Maybe I can, I don't know. I don't think I'll be able to buy anything, but I'm just going to double check. Uh, I can. I can. I can buy level 4. I can buy Malorin. Or I can buy Burak Dashbog. 
Um, Barak or Malorin? Eh, we'll get Malorin. You know what? We'll grab Malorin. You might be wondering why I'm buying Cleric Hirelings and my character already has the ability to heal. And it's because I find the Cleric Hirelings just do the most damage. All right. Let's go do some adventures. Oh, I just leveled up so it desummoned my wolf. I'm so dumb. Well, you know, it is what it is. I am, in fact, so dumb. All right, get this going here. There's no traps. I'm just going to use my wisdom, and I'm going to go beat these guys up. Divine spells stronger. They made divine hirelings buff as fuck. Yay. Yeah. Well, they just, they just melee really hard. That's why I like them. I have a reasonable amount of armor class here as well. And I heal for a lot. I have 130, 36 hit points. I get more hit points because of the two weapon fighting feats that I gain for free. I technically have two combat style feats, so I get a bunch of hit points right away. Even though I'm taking the shield feats for defensive purposes. I could do the silver roll, that's true. That's uh, also an option. Yeah, from here on out, I'm going to be leveling up pretty much just Dark Hunter. Um, so my character is definitely going to be a Dark Hunter now. Game of the Silver. All right, give me a sec. I will set it up in a moment. Just got to fight these dogs, man. Go team. All right. Doing a little bit of multitasking, you know. Dogs, those are Robbie Warhounds. Thank you. I like the shirt. I got it on sale. It was five dollars. It had little watermelons on it, and I like watermelon, so I was like, yeah, what a good deal. And it's very comfortable. A million sunflasks. You have a million? Or you have like a million. Dexterity can't work, but I can use this rune. Oh, I'm doing this because I get an extra treasure chest. And the treasure chest is good because it gives me more words. Flex them. You could. You could use your sunflash on a flex. It's an option. Great club. Not ideal. Two flex buddies. Mm-hmm. More people adding to the flex pool of people who have flexed with their 1 million flasks? You never know. Um, a dagger, scimitar. I can't wear any of these. So I guess there's technically a con shield. This would give me more health than my current shield. So I can do that. It gives me a bigger shield, which is not bad. Also, I forgot to get the quest from Bodri. Because Bodri gives you a collectible bag, which is convenient because I'm picking up all the collectibles. I'm always going to do that because when you pick up collectibles, you can get Eberron Dragon Shard Fragments, which is convenient. And then I'm going to talk to Fitpat's The Fence. And Fitpat The Fence is going to give me a gem bag. And the gem bag is great because it holds all my gems. Of which you will find many of them as you play through the game. Yeah, I don't, I don't really need the dagger, so that's not an option for me. But don't put them all into the prediction. That's a bad idea. You turn 46 tomorrow? Oh, happy birthday! If I don't end up talking to you tomorrow. That's exciting. Be a fun weekend? Oh, man. 46 on a Friday? And then you get to kind of just do whatever you want with the rest of the weekend? That sounds like it's going to be great. And to make sure my character doesn't die, I'm going to use a resist electricity potion because I don't want to die. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. Yeah, that's sweet. That's awesome, dude. I'm very happy to hear that. And there it is! The flex on chat. Amazing. Can you... Also, I forgot to say, um, you're now added to the very small pool of people that have flexed on the chat. People ask all the time, Stream Tom, what do I do with the channel points? The answer is not a lot, but you can flex on chat with them. And that's amazing. Putting one million down, what an amazing thing to do. Unbelievable. You just show people, you throw it in their faces. You say, I don't need all this. There's a list? Yes. It's a very thin list. But I can tell you. 
I don't have the list published, but I have the list. Uh, let's see. Flex on the chat. We have... Okay. I'm not supposed to be in here. We have Bobby, Megabro, EXE, and Kalari. Now on the list of people who have flexed on the chat. A uh, fun fact about this quest when you're running it, um, the smuggler's rubies that you're finding uh, are only drop in barrels. So you actually only need to break the barrels. That's right, you're you're on you're on a list, that is correct. Um as a result of being on the flex on chat list, uh, you're no longer allowed to board airplanes to several different countries. Uh, make sure you refer to the uh, your local government for which uh, countries you are no longer able to visit. I'm very sorry. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, it's not me. It's 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 you. It's a, it's, a, it's something that you guys did to yourself. And often waste it. There you go. Yeah. Hey man, I wasted eight thousand points on this cosmetic bundle. <laughs> No fly, just use teleport scrolls. Way faster. Way faster. Good idea. Oh, I don't have the ability to jump. My character's too slow. Agonizingly so. Whoop. Rating to celebrate? Oh, that could be fun. Yeah, you could do a whole bunch of things. On my birthday, I didn't do anything super special. But um, the week after, I went out with my friends. We did the Pokemon Go Axu day, where we went and caught a bunch of Axus as well, because we were at a place with over, a, like, 2,000 people playing Pokemon Go. It was crazy. Because um, there was an actual Pokemon Go event that was happening. Some Pokemon Go live streamer, someone named Pokedaxi, I'd never heard of him before this time, was actually working with Pokemon Go to do an in-person event, where they had, like, this whole course setup that you have to run and catch Pokemon at. It was pretty fun. I actually got... I, I did it. I actually got some pictures. I don't know why I didn't post them. Um, <laughs> as somebody who has a presence online, I'm not very good at sharing details of my life. But anyways, uh, so I did that. Um, there was also several um, Shadow Articuno raids that were going on, and Articuno is one of my favorite Pokemon, so we managed to catch two of them. Because the raids would just fail instantly. Like, the, the thing would pop up, and then it would be like, oh, full raid, full raid, full raid, because there were so many people there. Um, so we ended up I had a pretty good day. It was a really good Saturday. And then I came home, and my friends made this table, which you can see behind behind me. They actually made it. Uh, and then they gave it to me, and we played D&D &D on it later that night. So I had a really, really good weekend. Yeah. Did I get any shinies? I didn't get a shiny Articuno, but I got, like, eight shiny Axus. And my brother got a perfect one, although he already had it. Because we love you and didn't have us picking on you for an evening. True. It was a perfect time. Okay. There we go. Get this. Ugh. Also ran into somebody who caught a perfect shiny. Which is very exciting. Almost all the shinies that I have are very, very bad. But that guy got a perfect one, which is very cool. Sylveon and a lowland graveler. I love a lowland graveler. It's lightning. It's lightning rock. You tell you what, he's ready to rock and roll. No need to plug in the amp. He is the amp. The skybox, great desktop material. You're very good at coming up with ideas for desktop backgrounds. It sounds like a weird thing to compliment somebody for, but like the few times I've seen your desktop, you always have like cool backgrounds. Estonia. Yeah. Go to the people DDO playing as your job. Yeah. It's fun. There there are stressful elements to it as well. But it's a lot of fun. Oh no, Lovegood was slain at level 18! I played with Lovegood literally yesterday. And Cardo was slain? They, they, I assume they both got slain by the same trap. Oh no, that sucks. Like taking photos in games? Yeah, true. I wonder what trap it was weren't there to protect them. I was really worried about playing with Lovegood. It seemed like they weren't like at the keyboard while they were playing. It's I actually left their party because I, I didn't feel comfortable playing with them. They were like, they were one of those people that played slowly, 
but played slowly. And this is why I say zerging is a good idea. They play slowly in like the most inefficient way possible in the sense that like they stop in the middle of rooms and they like look around and they wait. And then like people will move to the next room and they're just standing there still like looking around and waiting like first time flower sniffing on hardcore league. And it was just like stressful because intelligence and accuracy. Ooh, that's not bad. It was just stressful because you're like, oh man, I want to help this person succeed. I want them to do well, but also at the same time, like they're putting my, me and everyone else in danger because they're like not really helping. Um, and also like they, they couldn't follow anyone. I'd like stand there and be like, hello. I'm like walking backwards. You can go check the stream yesterday. And they like, they couldn't follow anybody and they would just stand around. And so I was like, well, I don't want to be in this group anymore. This person makes me uncomfortable. So I got to go. Everybody plays the game at a different pace, but like we slowed down and it was, there was no slowing down enough that we could do. And they got lost because they were following their own hireling and everybody left and they were like, ah, where's my hireling? So like I said, it's just somebody who was going at a different pace and I, it's not a really good hardcore pace. Did last night's Baldur's Gate stream end suddenly? Yes, it did because my internet service provider, uh, my internet like literally died. It actually, it died for like, I think like less than like an hour or something. But when it died, I was like, well, it's been 11 and a half hours. This is a good time to go to bed anyway. If you missed it, by the way, I actually uploaded it onto my stream VODs channel. I should make a new command for my stream VODs channel. Pay attention for a sec. <laughs> okay. Shrimp VODs is open. Or VODs, not Shrimp VODs. So both VOD and VODs will work. They'll both do the same thing. So you'll be able to go check that out for like some VODs and stuff that I, that I upload. Again, it's just going to be like devotion of healing lore. Damn. It's just going to be like clips and stuff. So nothing super major. So I really love stream content. I mean, really love it. Yeah. It's it's all unedited content. So because it takes too long to edit down whole streams, especially since I want to do other things. So the content that's on there is fully unedited. But if you ever miss stuff, and I'll try to upload things in bits and pieces. I'm not going to upload everything, but I'll try my best to get things up there. I'm going to try to put in an effort now anyway. It's actually really easy to do. The hardest part about it is just me being good at properly recording things and cutting things. Would cast your sacred fist work? Yep, you can cast her whatever you want. You can definitely cast her sacred fist if you want to. The thing about caster is it's all about just using Fade Arc Illusionist. That's the whole point of caster X. You're just using Fade Arc Illusionist. Yeah, exactly. You could do caster barbarian. It would be very bad, but you could do it. You are allowed. It's not a crime, so oddly enough. Although, this guy's trying to kill my dog. Oh, my lay on hands is 145. That's not bad. I'll take it. For spell power being somewhat broken. Uh, I don't recall. I need more specifics. Rando bot die? No, I got everything. I'm done. I finished hardcore with it. So no, my randomly generated character is perfectly fine. Um, because I can, I think we're going to go do, um, Stealth Repo. 
Because it gives me an extra loot chance, and it's extra XP, which I need as well. Um, I'm trying to think of what's good here. Anything good? Holy Short Sword, Swift Rapier Feeding. There's nothing good on this list. So I'm just going to take something high level that I can sell it for more gold. Play for epic levels in those builds. They get a lot better because you get access to actual epic abilities that do lots of damage. AoE four spells and things. Whereas here, they, I don't have as many four spells. Okay, so the trick to doing this is resist electricity. The rest of this is not that big of a deal. As long as you have resist electricity, your character is going to be fine. Now, the reason why I say that is because um, there's no traps you have to deal with, just a lot of individual monsters. The thing is, you just have to not kill the kobold prophets. You can kill everything else. And so, because my character has the ability to heal itself incredibly quickly and effectively, I don't need to worry about getting swarmed by kobolds because I just have to make sure I kill the individual kobolds that are dangerous. So this kobold shaman needs to die, and then once it's dead, I'm not worried about the rest of the kobolds. It's not a big deal for me. So then what you do is once you have that taken care of, I didn't aggro that room, I'm then going to pick individual kobolds and kill this one. Then I'm going to go to here and kill this kobold. It won't sit still. And basically just kill all the ones that are not the prophets. So now I have three prophets following me, but I don't really care about that because, again, it's not a big deal. And that's how you do it. It's very This quest is very easy and straightforward to do. Um, a lot of people get intimidated by it, but uh, you don't have to be intimidated by it. Now, when you have the witch doctors show up, this is where it gets kind of scary because they do have some scarier magic. But again, it's, it's not too bad. The shamans, if you get cursed, also can be a problem. But again, if you happen to be like me and you already bought your curse potions, you're going to be doing okay. Oh, also, if you have, like, no armor class... Oh, my hirelings are with me. But I told them not to be with me. Anyway, if you uh, happen to not have a way to remove curse on yourself, that can be dangerous. If you happen to have no way to uh, resist electricity on yourself, that can also be dangerous. So you got to be kind of mindful about that as well. Okay, so I got a kobold prophet. I have a warrior here with me. I'm gonna kill this warrior. I'm gonna kill this kobold here. There's another witch doctor in the side. I actually killed the prophet by accident. Kobold prophet. Let's say I'm just prophets now, and we're gonna keep going. That's how we do. Then you're gonna jump down here. Why do you jump down here? Because by jumping down this section, it means uh, the kobolds have to walk all the way around to get to me, and it gives me time to pull this lever down here, as well as climb this and pull this one. So it saves me a lot of time. So you don't have to worry about getting attacked. So even if you have difficulty like staving off the kobolds with your armor class, you don't have to worry about that as much here. Now we're in the bottom floors. It's pretty much impossible for me to get past this without having some amount of alert, um, but that's okay, as long as there isn't a witch doctor here, which there isn't. If there is, you gotta make sure you stop and kill stuff. Then you just have the Kobold Prophet go over here, uh, and you broke, break this open. I used to pull the lever that was there. You actually definitely don't need to pull the lever. If you just let the Prophet go, he'll ring the bell, which will open the door. You just gotta let the Prophet go on his own. And then I just kill all these monsters and we're done. Uh, hey, stream, I'm grinding out a favor on this reincarnation. How easy do you think it would be to hit 5k favor solo? It's very easy. Uh, why five levels of favorite soul? Uh, so that way you have the ability to use a maximum power close wounds for full healing for yourself and others in epics. Because close wounds caps out at cast level five. So you want to have all five cash levels. Coupons to use tomorrow. I love getting older. Yeah, I like coupons too. Whenever I get the opportunity, I'm a big coupon guy. So if it's like, oh, I have a coupon for a certain location, then I'm like very tempted to go use it somewhere. They do? Oh, I actually did not know that the SSG did that. Acid absorption with acid resist. Not bad. I'll take it. Not a bad item. Question about Dark to Dark Hunter. Why not take two Druid for more spell points and triple spike growth damage? Because uh, I have to take it later, and then I'd also have to give up on freedom of movement. It's not a terrible idea, but you have to give up on freedom of movement. I don't want to give up on freedom of movement. But it's technically an option. I might think about that later. You could do something like um, three favored soul, um, two druid, fifteen or sorry, fourteen dark hunter, four favored soul, two druid, and then that would give you the maximum damage on your spike growth, which is not a terrible idea. But yeah. 
get it from gear. Yeah. At that point, well, the one issue that I worry about is the fact that you don't get, um, oopsie, maximum cash levels, unfortunately, or cash levels is hard to come by because druids, I don't think, are affected by Ichthan or Signet Ring, and neither are rangers because they they count as divine spells, so you can be quelled, but they don't count as divine spells to the point where they can, um, you know, be used by stuff like that. You want to have uh, some spellcasters in there just so you can get access to meta magic feeds early. Does Ranger get spike growth? Uh, yeah, it does. At level 8. So I could do something like take Ranger until 10 and then do two levels of Druid. That is an option. I'm still thinking about it. I might do that. Get double damage on the spike growth. It would definitely help out with the clear a lot. So then I have it at 12. No, closed wounds. I'm talking about the closed wounds caster level. A soft sound out of a animal. It also means I wouldn't get freedom of movement until level 20 as well. A little sketch. Well, no, I wouldn't get freedom of movement until level... 18. Oh, I can deal with freedom of movement at 18. I don't know how much you need freedom of movement for 18. Can you link the build somewhere, please? Yeah, it's in my Discord. So if you go into the Discord and you go into Hardcore 8 Build Guides, you'll find it. Yeah, Close Wounds is fantastic. It just, it's the, the day saver for sure. Yeah, it looks the outfit looks great on Dark Hunter, so I'm I'm pretty happy with the way it looks on my character so far. Quest received. That's not an option. I could do like eleven and twelve. Just lose a little bit of power on the close wounds, but then gain the power on the the other stuff. The other problem is enhancement point spread. Um, the points are like really tight already. So like, do you have eight points to spend? Is the harder part. Because, like, you got to take 40... It's, you know, the whole tree in Fate Dark Illusionist, right? So you're taking the whole Fate Dark Illusionist tree, which is pretty good for what you're trying to do. And then you're taking the entirety... Uh, then you, you want to get Dark Hunter up to here, Lupine Instincts, so that way your character has the ability to search and disable traps, because without that you won't be able to. Then you need to have Beacon of Hope as well. So that's 41 and 20 and 8. And then you'd have to basically, instead of taking the Force Crit out of Angel of Vengeance... Because you get 12, 6% force crit, you'd instead be getting 2% crit and double damage on spike growth, and you only get that on spike growth. And then it's like, then it's only spike growth versus just getting 6% crit across the board, and I kind of like 6% crit across the board, but then it makes the leveling experience easier. It's a tough call. I'm not sure what the answer is. There's a lot of, there's a lot of tough decisions there. Pop myself my... Water breathing ring, so I can breathe underwater. Also, my my wolfie, he got cursed. Oh, poor boy. Is entangle ever good? Uh, it's good against kobolds because entangle against small creatures is basically web. So I don't hate it. Metal grinds on metal, and ripples spread across the water. Against medium or higher, it's not that big of a deal. It, like, slows them down. I've used Entangle in the past, because you just drop an Entangle, and then you can kite around the Entangle, like, in a circle, which is not too bad, but, yeah, it's tough. It's tough to make a, a, a full evaluation of Entangle as well. spell. All right, my minions go kill that, that ooze. So I don't wish to do that. I'm going to come in here and kill everything else. I don't know when I'm going to unspec a lot of things. I think maybe when I take five. Is that when I hit six and I have enough points, I'm going to take Fan of Shadow Blades and max it out and then go back for the healing later. But yeah, we'll see. You, see a path that has been unceremoniously you can't spell. That's right. You can't spell. This is the new cosmetic that they added to the game. So this is the Drow, or it's the Drow Hunters Underdark Warrior Sword with the new... Underdark um, weapon aura. Just like a green ghost flame sort of thing. It's kind of cool. 
the, the coloration of the weapon reminds me of the the ghosts from like the Oathbreakers and the Lord of the Rings movie. It's very cool. It's a very fancy effect. I like it. Um, Wisdom 2 Cloak? Oh, that's great. But this is also a Devotion 47. I was kind of hoping for like some trapping gear. I didn't pull, pick up any. I'll take Wisdom 2. That means I don't have to drink an Owl's, Owl's Wisdom Potion all the time. Which is convenient. Um, okay, so now I want to go towards Fade Dark Illusionist. So I can get closer towards my, my attack here. So we're going to get that soon. I think for now I kind of have to keep my pet. As much as I don't want to, I kind of have to keep it for now. Do you by any chance know how many skill points Dragonborn get at each level plus int mod? Uh, skill points are based off of your class, not your race. So zero is the answer to that question. Your race has nothing to do with skill points. It's uh, based off of your cla what class you are and your intelligence. Yeah, human is the exception where humans get a free skill point per level. That's like one of their that's one of their racial effects that they get because they're like and the and a feat because they're multifaceted. And purple dragon knights are humans. So they also get that. Okay, I'll let my pets take care of this. I don't think their weapons are going to break, so they should be okay here. Good job, team. And uh, I need some more treasure because I'm not doing well in terms of the equipment department. So I'm going to come over here and crack this open. Uh, this is a secret door that will lead to a troglodyte and an extra treasure chest. So I'm um, just going to see how that goes. That. Okay, that's all we got. And they're going to take down the troglodytes. I'm going to get the treasure chest. And hopefully there'll be something good in here. Ray. Hand wraps. Rats. These aren't even like good enough hand wraps to give to my dog. Unfortunate. Did you get the 8,000 point mount? Yeah, I did. I bought that mount. And I worn it too. Yep. Gonna buy a new wheels for the old tractor, but... I think it'd be better to get that 8,000 point mount. Mm -hmm. Oh, scary skeleton hanging from the ceiling. Skobolds don't mess around when they hang skeletons from the ceiling. Like, dude, that's metal as hell. Mr. Cheese, say how long they'd be in the shop. I believe it is July 28th is the final day in the shop. Uh, it cannot dance. The cat cannot dance. All right, treasure chest number two. Something good, please. Uh, I got a shield of turn undead. It's made of flame touched iron, which is nice. Not really helpful, but it is in the game. Again, I'm kind of ignoring the oozes because I just don't want to deal with them because they break my weapon. So I'm just going to kind of ignore it. Also, I still haven't found a better longsword, unfortunately. So I'm using the ember longsword this entire time. So I have a plus one. Uh. Sort of mentions the cat will dance later. Yep, but we also got raptors added to the game a year to, a year ago, and they also can't dance. The June twenty eighth. I thought somebody said it was July. I didn't read it that well myself. Um, oh, it's two weeks. There you go. Two weeks. Yeah. So it can't dance. Um, they didn't add a dance. I guess they didn't think it was important. Um, but they did want to send out this thing that costs eighty dollars. I don't care how much people charge for cosmetics. I've said this before. The fact that they want to make it eight thousand DDO points doesn't bother me. I'm not too concerned about the fact that it costs eight thousand DDO points. I don't care. What bothers me is the fact that this. Oh yeah, by the way, this trap. There's eight acid jets that instantly kill you if you go for this. Um, so make sure that if you're gonna loot this chest, you gotta disable the trap. Uh, the problem I have with it is the fact that it is something that's 8,000 DDO points and it's not done. That's just despicable. They should feel bad for that. Like, the people that are responsible for that should feel... They should feel ashamed of themselves. It's not a minor bug. It's not a small thing. It's 80... You're asking people for $80 and you're going to give them something that is literally a mount and it's not even done. That's ridiculous and they should feel very, very bad about that. Also, goodbye, Lucidian. 
What's wrong with the mount? It doesn't have a dance. Hey, Jim, do you know if the reflection of wave and arc can augment his stack? I do not. Horses have a dance. It has the ability to have a dance hookup on it. When you use the dance, it plays the horse's dance animation. So clearly there's supposed to be a dance. The answer of we'll finish it later is not good enough. I think that, like I said, I, I, I literally think it is it is a it is it is wrong. It is a wrong thing to do. You know what's less than the cost of that mount pack? Diablo 4. Diablo 4. I don't even like Diablo 4 that much. It's cheaper than that. So like clean up your house. Like I said, I find it I find it really bad. It reflects badly on them. And uh yeah. They shouldn't have done that. Death block fortification armor. The game is rewarding me for my base takes. They're like, what do you say, Shroom Tom? It's not worth it? Based. Straight up. Look at that. Unbelievable. Uh, just another random gen build? No, this is my solo hunter guided playthrough. I'm going to show you how to play Dark Hunter um, while also uh, doing it on a caster that is not very good. Dark Hunter, Caster, Ranger. I'm going to dump this on the auction house, actually. Uh, refurbish necklace of combustion. I don't want to use any of this other stuff. My backpack is just so full. I'm going to be careful about this. All right, cool. Pricing is insulting. I don't care about the pricing. They can charge whatever they want for things, but if you're going to charge a lot of money for something, it has to work. And if it doesn't work, then you should feel bad. That's That's my opinion. I don't care that it costs that they want to charge eight thousand points for it. It's their store; they can charge whatever they want. People want it; they'll buy it. People don't want it; they won't buy it. But I don't like the idea of them selling something that doesn't function for that price compared to other things you can get for that price that already function. You want to buy a mount? Go buy the nightmare mount. It's it's dance actually functions, and it's like not even close to the same price. Does it give much liquid like salt marsh? Yeah, I have the dread. I, I don't know. We'll have to find out. Um, I don't want this to be like, like I said, I, we already talked about this a lot yesterday. So I'm kind of like, it, it just puts me in like a, a, a negative space I don't want to be in. So I don't want to like spend the entire day talking about it. But yeah, I'm if, as it's just my point is, or not my point, my stance is I, I don't care about how much they want to charge for cosmetics. It doesn't bother me because, you know, their cosmetics they're not effective they're not affecting like your gameplay experience but i do care if people if they're gonna put in the effort to actually charge charge people for something and then it actually be completed like that that i do want to be addressed um so because my character started with the 16 intelligence um i can actually crack open this area here and pull this valve what this is going to do is it's going to open a secret door and if one of my characters that I have with me has a 20 strength, or an 18 strength, which my Dark Wolf doesn't, I hope Malorin does, there's actually a 20 strength valve that needs to be pulled. So we'll see if we can get it pulled here. If Malorin can't pull it, then I have to figure out what to do about that. And I don't know what I'm going to do, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, it's also the new expansions level 18, which is very confusing. I have the intelligence to use this because it's 18, and hopefully one of my teammates... Come on, Malorin... No, he doesn't. None of them have... They don't have the strength high enough. That's unfortunate. I was hoping they would be able to crack that open for me. If my wolf pet... I did have it have... Sh if I, or if I had it get ship buffs, it would have been fine. But I didn't. So, yeah. Like, I have been playing Sandstone games, video games, for a long time. So I understand that, obviously, the quality will be varying. Or rather, they're more of a ship-it-fix-it-later sort of company. Or, in a lot of cases, ship-it-never-fix-it sort of company. But I usually give them a pass because it's like, oh, you know, smaller smaller team. They do usually get around to fixing a lot of bugs. And for the size of the game that exists, we do get a fair amount of content. And I'm happy that the game hasn't gone into maintenance mode. So, you know, there's a lot of... 
there's a lot of conflicting feelings that are there but like yeah the the, the whole thing of the mounts not having a dance i think is just something that never should have happened um and like i said it's a it's a huge like like, in my opinion, I think it's a it's a, like a, a big stain. There's no reason it shouldn't have been like fixed or like not fixed, but like it shouldn't have been like added into the game. At the price that it is, and the cost that it is, and what they say you're gonna get, it's ridiculous that it, that they didn't do it. It'd be like if, like, I'm trying to think of a good example. I don't know. It's, it's just a bad practice. I don't like to see it. Did you get this out by a certain time? Yeah, that's the thing, too, is, like, there's, I don't know why they had to do this now. It's like the supporter packs didn't have to come out today. It's their own product. They could release it whenever they want. It's not like a firm deadline. We didn't even know it was going to be coming. They literally didn't tell us it was going to be a thing in the future. So it was a complete mystery. They had all the time in the world. Which kind of makes it sound even worse. But yeah, this is one of the reasons why I don't like having these type of negative conversations. Because it's really easy to like start spiraling downwards. And being like, well, they did this. Well, they didn't even do this. Well, they could have done this. Fucking these guys suck. And it gets like worse. That's why I just want to move on from this topic. Maybe they could use the cash, but they didn't sell it for cash. It's for DDO points. Usually with something like this, you would sell it something for cash so you could get like a quick cash influx. But there was no cash involved. Which is even weirder. Yo, what's up, Near South? How you doing? How are you? That double DDO points two weeks ago? I guess. Like, maybe they want to drain DDO points from people's accounts. But again, even then, it feels kind of weird. Okay, so I already looted this and I got nothing. All right. Not a lot of great items here, but I did get the... I can't complain too much. I did get the, uh, you know, fortification death block armor. So I'm pretty pretty happy about my general results in terms of my equipment. So I can't complain too much. Should have Blizzard instead. Um, They haven't done anything recently, though. Like Diablo 4 came out. And I think that, you know... Anybody that had the expectation that Diablo 4 was going to be like a 10 out of 10 video game is delusional. Also, anyone that thinks that Diablo 4 was ever going to be like a 0 to 10 video game is also like delusional. It's a very, very safe, very corporate product. It's extremely pretty. They have some of the most talented artists in the video games industry working on making the game look really good. And they did a great job of that. The game is super pretty. Um, and the gameplay is... Like, relatively shallow and simple, because they didn't want to try to do anything scary or make people have to think. They wanted something that would sell, like, hotcakes that you could tell your friends to get started playing. But it just doesn't have a lot of, like, endgame content. And, again, in terms of the landscape of action RPGs, it just doesn't deliver on some of the complexity I think a lot of people wanted out of it. Also, it has a bunch of, like, weird design decisions that are just smaller and it picks more than anything else. That's, like, fine. It's like, like I said, I'd rate it a 6.5 out of 10. But, like... That already happened. That was like two weeks ago. <laughs> um, Accuracy, jump, deception. Still no trapping gear. So I am limited based on the gear that I have for trapping, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Shit on Blizzard. Those things cost $7. They do. They do. They do cost $7. Yeah. The blizzard I had yesterday was amazing. Did the summer sales were posted? No, I didn't see the new summer sales. Do you have a link? I did not see it. I'll probably look it up here. I know what the new summer sales of the week are. Alright. You might be wondering why I'm not dual wielding as a ranger. Um, because I can dual wield to do more physical damage here, even though I'm supposed to be a caster, you know, just in the interim. The problem is, I can't really dual wield. Librarian scans the shelves, muttering to himself. Best wait for him to leave. So it's I'm kind of boned in that regard, because I don't have another longsword. I can only really use longswords, and I've only found one so far in the game. So I can't really dual wield. So that's kind of my issue I've got here. 
Oh my god, we had Avogadro in in the uh, in in the guild. Damn, that guy's got a great number. The librarian has left the room. Quick, obtain the, the librarian's voice. Shrieks. I know, I know your true intentions, thief. My, my traps, traps will be the end. end of you. What a guy. Best for skin. Some quests and currency for battle pass. Makes like they're not confident in the content they're releasing. Yeah. It's so weird. I've said this before. I think this is probably the best time ever to play video games, which might sound really dumb, but because you're like, oh, but new releases suck. Because, yeah, pretty much every new game that comes out sucks. It is like one of the worst games ever made. And it costs $100. But there's unbelievable top shelf fantastic games that go on sale on Steam every day for like 20 bucks. Um, you've got, so that's cool. You've also got like infinite libraries of older games and older titles that can be quickly emulated and then even if you go back even further if you're a pc gamer this is obviously for pc gamers you're you've got amazing things you can do and if you're a console gamer if you have an xbox you can use game pass and still play a lot of amazing games did you never play psychonauts guess what guys psychonauts is on game pass you can play psychonauts on your friggin xbone that's crazy or the remake or the psychonauts 2 also an option but you know to me it just feels like it's a good time to play games. But then on the other hand, man, there's so many like just disappointing major releases coming out all the time, which is just depressing. Yeah. And, and also indie games are just like, like pretty much the best games. They carry the entire market with all the new ideas and things that they do. And then bigger game companies go like, whoa, that's interesting. The game will own to be fair though final fantasy games at least recently have been like very good final fantasy has been super good for a long time final fantasy 15 i think a lot of people liked final fantasy 15 getting to be the backstreet boys driving around in your flying car i think that was a, a thing people liked doing have you played the demo i've never played a mainline final fantasy game other than Final Fantasy 1. So I did not play the Final Fantasy 16 demo. But I've played Final Fantasy 1. Does that count? If that doesn't count, uh, Mulligan. I have a lot of fun with FF14. Yeah, FF14 is fantastic. Huge fan. Great video game. Honestly, probably the best MMORPG on my market. Absolutely fantastic. Would recommend. The reason why I don't play more Final Fantasy 14 is I just got distracted by other video games. A lot of like DDO stuff coming out. Um, Hardcore League really affects my desire to play these games. Also, I didn't talk about it, but there's a the trap box for this trap is right back there. Uh, this solo guided playthrough is going to be really weird because it's my third one. I'm going to be a little less focused on just telling you exact details and descriptions of everything and everywhere. So just keep that in mind. Excuse me, if you got a console, does PlayStation 4 count? As having a console? Disable device 5. Let's go. Oh, Oh, oh no, Sheltering 7, Spell Focus Mastery 1? Oh, a longsword? Why? Why do you do this to me? All in one shop. Oh my god. Oh. Um. I need the disabled device more than anything else. If I don't get the disabled device, I'm going to be in trouble. Yeah, I got to go with the gloves. Because like the disabled device is the really realistically the only thing that matters of that whole list. The other stuff like the the long sword. I, once I hit level five, I can't use swords anymore, so I have to go to caster. So it doesn't matter, um, and I have to start casting my way through everything at level. Um, uh, and the helmet, as much as it would be nice to have plus one to all spell DCs and sheltering, because that 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 would be nice. Um, it's not like necessary. Because I already, I'm pretty defensive already. I've got 25 physical and 13 magical. So my character is like relatively safe. And my saves are gigantic. 
The only thing that's really lacking is my reflex saves, but if I get a single dex item, I'll be okay with that. Gotcha. Offer? You like? Worth it? Uh, worth it? Uh, it's cosmetics. So, I would say, in my opinion, is the $80 coffer worth it? No, it's not. Especially considering that the $80 coffer, or the 8,000 point coffer, doesn't have a mount in it. The cosmetics look amazing. So the, the visuals of the cosmetics are absolutely fantastic. My character looks astonishing. I love the way my character looks. Um, they did a really, really good job with that. But... So the cosmetics are very high quality. I do like them. I don't have bad things to say about the cosmetics. They do look really, really good. I just wish I wasn't green right now. Um... Do I have Feather Falling? No, I don't. But I have a Feather Falling item, right? I have a Feather Falling Cloak, right? Yeah. I have Enchantment Resistance. Okay. But, like, look at my character. This armor set is amazing. I love the shine on it. I love the details. I've tried it on a few different races. It looks really good. Um, I love the way the helmet looks and the, the cowl, the cloak looks really good. And then the weapon aura is great. It reminds me of the, um, like, it's just got this weird ghostly nature to it and the colors. Fantastic. They did a great job with it. But like, it's a lot of points though. Mm -hmm. I don't think I don't think the battle cat's worth it. The only reason you would get the battle cat is if you really want the battle cat and the shared storage. So yeah. Points are free, of course. Yeah. I, that's that's why I bought it. I had extra points. I don't I don't ever buy points. So I just had a bunch kicking around. So I was like, oh, I have a good idea. All right, let's go do this one. And that should, I think, be the last level two that I'm going to do. And I can move on to the higher level quests, which means I can take level five. Damn, already hitting level five on this character? It only took me three hours. Not bad. Slower than normal, but you know what? It's not too bad. Guided playthrough will be on YouTube. I'll start up uploading pieces soon. Yeah, like if you're gonna sp if you're gonna buy DDO points to buy the cosmetics, I would say it's not really worth it. If you're somebody who's like I have, like yourself, I have twenty thousand DDO points sitting around, I don't know what to do with them. Then yeah, buy it. Uh, important thing about it, buying it, um, you have to re uh, re log on login. It adds the mount to your mount stable and it adds your pet to your pet stable, so it just does it automatically, which is very convenient because it means if you buy it in future hardcore leagues, it's autom your mount is automatically added to your character. Um, and on the uh so that's cool and then i was gonna say the second thing is the the storage the character storage is for one character the um shared storage is obviously for your whole account uh, and then to get the rest of the stuff you have to get it from a dude in the hall of heroes who's fair on youtube not my cup of tea but i imagine a good amount of views no it's one of my least watched things People don't really watch the solo guided playthroughs because it's really only like helpful for you if you're somebody who, you know, needs the solo guided playthrough, and so they don't do too well. But they they have a very strong fan base. People really like them, but and are very vocal about it. But they don't get they don't get viewed very well. It's also mentally taxing. I find doing sol playing solo for like, you know, sixty hours very tedious. <laughs> Inspire me to try new things. Nice. Well, that's good. That's it. That's why I do it. I just don't do it all the time. And there's no live stream? Yep. Thank you, Doc Jekyll. True. I'm not alone. I have you guys here with me. If you're wondering why I'm breaking all the crates in here, so my personal policy when breaking crates while solo is don't. You should probably never break any crates while solo because it's a big waste of your time based on how much XP you get versus the amount of time it takes to break all the crates. However, there is an exception to this, uh, which is quests that have small amounts of crates for a huge benefit. For example, this quest has very few of them. I've broken 23 and I've almost got the bonus. It's worth it to break like 30 crates for 
um, the special bonus. You just got to pay attention to certain quests. This is one of the few quests where I will break all the crates in. Another game since I did DDO. Yep, absolutely. That's why I know people like them because that's I did it for like solo players and people who were getting started to be like, hey, this is how you can get through. This is a group of quests to go run. Should I have some on the sidelines with Pokemon Chess? I don't think I should multi-box Pokemon Chess, but I could. Pokemon Chess. In a box breaking mode? Box breaking mode. Grab this, grab this, and we're all set. Now I can level up. I don't think I have any other twos that I want to do. I think I'm pretty happy with this. So now I'm going to take a level of Ranger, and I'm also my character is going to lose the ability to attack with my weapon, so I'm going to be actually becoming Caster Ranger right now. So if you don't know how Caster Ranger is going to perform, trust me, it's going to get better from here. So now, unfortunately for me, I just lost my Wisdom to damage with my sword because I'm no longer Dominant Cleric, or Dominant Favored Soul means I don't need this deep with soccer point at all. So I'm going to put a point in here, grab the Spellcraft because it's very good for my character, pick up three points in Shadow Blade so I can cast Shadow Blade. And what do I do? Probably just going to grab the Closed Wound so I can heal a lot individually. And my character is now basically exclusively casting Shadow Blade and Closed Wounds, which is not ideal, but it is the limitation of my character as of right now, which means I will need support. However, because I have closed wounds, I can now grab like a melee character as opposed to a caster of some kind, um, like a cleric, and that should help me a little bit with the leveling process. That should be pretty good. So we're gonna we're gonna see how that goes. Um, devoted leather armor. I kind of do want a devotion item, but I have maximized, so it's okay. That. Oh yeah, absolutely. Nature build and realize maximum bow damage. And pure warlock. Nice. I'm glad you're enjoying those builds. I like those builds. They're quite good. So the reason why I wasn't using the tower shield before is because I was worried about it reduces your hit chance while using a tower shield, but now I don't have to worry about using a tower shield. Also, I can wear this devoted of healing lore weapon because I'm not meleeing anything because meleeing anything doesn't really work for me. I kind of like having dex featherfall boots on all the time, so I think I'm going to put those on just full stop. Um, and I'll leave the expeditious boots. So I have the move speed. I don't need this. I don't need an intelligence item because I can cast the spell. Sell the docents out of my inventory. Needs his baubles. Wisdom one. I don't need this. I don't need that. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need resist sonic potions. It's totally useless. So I think I'm all set. The only potion I need now is a resist acid and cold. So I'm gonna go buy those real quick. Should have been made it into baseline. Um, bow characters do feel bad in the leveling process. Oh man, I'm minus four to hit now. Amazing. Where's the guy at? Uh, Hall of Heroes downstairs. He's like literally at the bottom of the ramp. It's Z Zena, Z Z Zena, I think it's the name. Um, why did I come here? Oh, I gotta bank my collectibles. Don't take anything out of the shared storage stream, Tom. You're not allowed. Uh... I wanna. Sans Undertale? Yep, I agree. You have Rapid Shot? Yep. Death Ramp? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna buy a couple potions here that are important. And then I'm gonna quickly go use the bathroom, because that's also important. Because using the bathroom is essential to success. If you don't do that, you're going to have a huge issue down the road. So buy 10 of these, buy 10 of these. And just in case, because I don't know if it's coming, I got Remove Curse, I'm going to get Remove Disease. Let's buy five of these just in case. Because you're like, I just never know what's on the what's on the horizon, so I want to make sure I just cover my bases. All right. Uh, I'm going to buy Hireling as well, which is good. So I'm going to go over here and pick up a melee one. Who's good? Ormal, Soggy Bottom. Um, sure. Let's try Ormal. See how it goes. 
Did you respect your enhancements for casting? I may have missed that. Yes, I did. I'll leave this up while I go to the bathroom so you can see where I'm at so far. 